So we're just going to um, go in there, go into LFS then, run it from scratch, and make sure that, um, then just run through that, because I've been mentioning that I wanted to make a video about it. I figured better time than ever, you know, I have plenty of time, Friday night, why not? Okay, we have Firefox up, so let's go to Linux from org. So I'm going to be building this onto a USB drive. It's going to be, um, it's a 128 gig SSD for anyone that cares. It's going to be a, um, yeah, that's it. I'm going to do LFS. And then I'll also work on BLFS too once we get LFS installed, just because then it makes more, then it's more like an add on and it makes it more like a daily driver. Um, BLFS stands for Beyond Linux from Scratch. If you've ever, if you've used Linux from Scratch and you really actually installed a, um, and you've actually installed, uh, and you've actually installed like a, a, uh, a, a head on it, if you installed a, a um, graphical user interface if you install the window manager a desktop environment or whatever that means that you did BLFS you just didn't you just um it just people just call it LFS rather than making that distinction okay why would I want um I guess I'll just read through this for those that um, care uh, Linux from scratch is a project it is a uh, well, yes, it's a project that provides you with a step-by-step -step instructions for building your own customized Linux system entirely from source. Now, I would like to say that li with Linux from scratch, it is a book. This is a book. We're going to be going off of a book. And it's been a couple of years. It's been a while, I think, since George B Gerard Beekmans has been in total control, but the current managing editor is, um, God, is uh, Bruce Dubbs. I'm sorry, I forgot his name for a second. Let's pull up stable LFS. So we're going to read it online. Uh, again, I have the PDF downloaded. I wasn't sure whether we wanted to use that. Um, again, it's sort of whatever. Um, I know you can read. I have a um, I have a reader on here that I can use. It's a Calibre library. I might actually do a review of that because it is excellent. But... Um, and so is um well that that's separate sorry um off topic uh but calibre, calibre library is really good for uh, any um e publications it also allows you to convert from pdf to epub it's it can be a little wonky with formatting and such with especially with pages but that's something it does do see his name is on the copyright but i'm pretty sure he's just like there i i really don't know um okay Okay, forward. Uh, my journey is to learn and better understand. Uh, wow. My jo my journey to learn and better understand. I'm reading this, so you know I'm I I'm not I'm I'm as young as I look. Um, I'm not from uh, the early night. From, I wasn't born in the eighties. My uh, journey to learn and better understand Linux uh, began back in 1998. I just installed my first Linux distribution and had quickly become intrigued by the whole concept and philosophy behind Linux. There are always many ways to accomplish a single task. The same can be said about Linux distributions. A great many have existed over the years. Um, some still exist, and then some have morphed into something else. Yet others have been relegated to our memories. Um, they all do things differently to suit the needs of their target audience because so many uh, because so many different ways to accomplish the same goal exist. I um, began to realize I no longer had to be limited by one impl implementation. Prior to discovering Linux, we simply put up with issue issues in other operating systems as you had no choice. It was what it was whether you liked it or not. With Linux, the concept of choice began to emerge. If you didn't like something, you were free, honestly, even encouraged to change it. 
I tried a number of distributions and could not decide on any specific one. They were great systems on their in their own right, and it wasn't a matter of right or wrong anymore. It had become a matter of personal taste, um, which I think uh, just off script for a second, which I believe, which I think we can all relate to, if we're being honest. You know, we I use Arch Linux. It works for me. It's not maybe not my favorite. Obviously, Void Linux. I, I would talk that to the ends of the earth, but that Void Linux is my favorite distribution. But I, you know, I use Arch Linux. It suits my needs. On here, I have Void Linux on almost every other machine. But in this case, you know, I have a good use for it. I, it's my personal taste. It this, because Arch would be my second choice. So it's my personal taste because it works best on my machine. It's my favorite, uh, favorite uh, distribution that works best on my machine. I tried Void, but there were some issues with um the the lockdown hardware and such on this Chromebook. But with the um. But, you know, again, personal taste always comes in with your choices, specifically about Linux and what operating system you're going to choose, uh, especially when it comes to things like package managers and such. Those all all, those all are taken into account. Uh, unless you just really like it, then, you know, people just really like it. It's hard to... You can't exactly pinpoint, maybe... You can't exactly pinpoint just one thing that's that drives us to uh, one... Um, operating system or another, you know, again, other than, other than personal preference. Anyway, personal preference. Um, with it, with all that choice available, it became apparent that there would not be a single system that would be perfect for me. So I set out to create my own Linux system that would fully conform to my personal preferences. Now, this is where I would need to make a differentiation here. Linux from scratch is not necessarily intended to be built and then sold as a distribution. It is supposed to be you build your own distribution for yourself. And that's not saying you can't. People have, and they've been successful, I believe. Mage? Not Mage. Um, oh, I can't remember. But I do know that one has been based off of what Linux, is, Linux from scratch gives you. And they, you know, they developed their own package manager and such. So it's it, I, you could call it an independently developed distribution, but they didn't really change much code. They just they just sort of threw the packages on here. Um, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, it, it's just important to make that differentiation. It's not, it's supposed to, it's also, it's also not something you would necessarily daily drive either. I know people do. I've met people that do, and, you know, that's their choice. But you compile, you download and compile everything from source, and it's not like Gen two because uh, Gen two sort of does it automatically. You have to figure it out. You sort of have to base it off of your previous experience. It is a learning experience if I've ever seen one, but it is also it's it can be it, it can be pretty tedious. That's why at some points I might cut out a part or I'll start talking for a while because. For example, I've built this before. I can tell you, GCC will take a very long time to compile. I have 8 gigs of RAM, so it'll do it within reason, but it's not going to be... I, I, you can, It won't be done as quick as you can, say GCC. Alright. Um, just without that away. Um, to, make it, uh, to truly make it on my own system, I resolved to compile everything from source code uh, instead of using pre-compiled binary packages. This perfect, uh, quote, perfect Linux system would have the strengths of various systems without their perceived weaknesses. At first, the idea was rather daunting. I remained committed to that idea from a sis, uh, that the, such a system could be built. After sorting through issues such as circular dependencies and compile time errors, oh, you will learn dependencies. That's something that you'll learn. Um, and compile time errors, I finally built a custom-built Linux system. It was fully operational and perfectly usable, like any of the other Linux systems out there at the time, but it was my own creation. It was very satisfying to have put together such a system myself, which is something that if you're building this along, right alongside me, or I don't know, just, or if you're just, you know, not building it, you're just watching it because maybe you want to see how it's done or something, which is, you know, it's, it's whatever you want to do. If you ha will build it, 
especially your first time, even all the other ones, because it comes to a point where, you know, you're doing it so much, you might know it, but it's still, it's still like, yeah, I did it. But especially on your first installation, I remember I was excited because I put hours. I mean, I put hours into this because this takes, well, not hours. What am I saying? I mean, hours in the sense that it took me many hours, but it probably took me a week, something like that. Um, now. I was, in, admittedly, I wasn't completely focused on it. Here, this is all we're going to be doing. And I actually might, uh, I'm considering live streaming the next episode of this. Uh, of this. So I'm just going to try and crank this, try to crank LFS out so I can keep it, so I can um, keep it at the forefront of my mind. Um, sorry. Um, I remain committed that such an idea, that such a system could be built. Okay. Oh, uh, after sorting through issues such as circular dependencies and compile time errors, I finally built a custom-built Linux system. It was fully operational and perfectly usable like any of the other Linux systems out there at the time, but it was my own creation. It was very satisfying to have put together such a system myself. The only thing better would have been to create each piece of the software myself. This was the next best thing, which is why we say that it, it, this is also a reason why it cannot be said that you did it independently. Like it's not it's still technically not an independently developed distribution because you're not actually writing the code for the software. Um not downplaying what you're doing. Trust me, that's the last thing I wanna do, but um that is um no, that is the reality of the situation. Listen. <clears throat> Uh, as I shared my goals and experience, as I shared my goals and experiences with other members of the community, I became it became apparent that there was a sustained interest in these ideas. It quickly became plain that such a custom built Linux that such custom built Linux systems serve not only to meet user specific requirements, but also serve as an ideal learning opportunity for programmers and system admins to enhance their existing Linux skills. Out of the broadened interest, the Linux from Scratch project was born. This Linux from Scratch book is a central core around that project. It provides the background and instructions necessary for you for you to design and build your own system. While this book provides a template that will result in a correctly working system, you are free to alter the instructions to suit yourself, which is, in part, an important part of the project. You remain in control. We just lend a helping hand to get you started out on your own journey. I sincerely hope you'll have a great time working on your Linux from scratch system and enjoy the numerous benefits of having a system that is truly your own. Signed, Gerard Beekmans. And then it just lists his email. That's public information, so you know, it doesn't really matter whether it's blurred out or not. Next. Audience. Yeah, I'm just going to go through this with everyone. So the audience very specific so there are many reasons why you would like to read why you would want to read this book one of the questions many people ask raise is why go through all the hassle of manually building a Linux system from scratch when you can just download and install an existing one which I have a uh, side note I've heard this um, well you know I I'm in high school so I live at home and uh, when I was building my building up the first time around my uh, mom uh, would ask me why I um, why I wanted to build my own system, and you know, it was mostly just because I was interested in Linux. I wanted to see, I wanted to tear it apart. Well, well I guess this is putting it together. Um, I wanted to see what it's like to build to build my own distribution, at least in theory. Again, it's not the same thing, but um, but people would ask, you know, but my mom would ask, like, why are you doing this when you could just install another one? There is nothing like LFS. I think you'll find whether you're using Gentoo or not, which you compile from source. There's still nothing like using Linux from scratch. You don't have a package manager, and which I'll explain later. But you don't have a package manager. You compile everything. You build it yourself. You don't. It's not automated unless you do ALFS, which is automated Linux from scratch. It's you can do it, but it it's um. But you since you build Linux from scratch your own self since you build it yourself you have this frame that's like you know this was 
especially if you're interested and you said this was cool this is it, it taught especially it taught it teaches you something that that's mainly what it is it teaches you something and that's why i was doing it i wanted to learn and i wanted to do it but people people do ask uh, have asked me that or at least my mother has i don't go around telling people i use linux from scratch unless it comes up in conversation <laughs> One of the best things is that learn this learning learning experience can provide. Um, okay, I missed that. One important reason for this project's is existence is to help you learn how a Linux system works from the inside out. Building an LFS system uh, helps demonstrate what makes Linux tick, how many things, how things work together and depend on each other. One of the best things that this learning experience can provide is the ability to customize a Linux system to suit your own unique needs. Another benefit of LFS is that it allows you to have more control over the system without relying on someone else's implementation. Um, without someone else's Linux implementation. With LFS, you are in the driver's seat and dictate every aspect of the system. Hold on. Computer, turn on Declan's room. LFS allows you to create very compact Linux systems. When installing regular distributions, you are often forced to install a great many programs which are probably never used or understood. These programs waste resources. You may argue with today's hard drive CPU may you may argue that with today's hard drives and CPUs, such as the resources that are no longer a consideration. Um, such resources are no longer a consideration. Sometimes, however, you are still constrained uh, constrained by size considerations, if nothing else. Think about bootle, bootable CDs, USB sticks, and embedded systems. Those are areas where LFS can be beneficial. Uh, another, um, which, you know, um, another advantage of a custom-built Linux uh, system is security. By compiling the entire system yourself from source code, you are empowered to audit everything and apply this all the security patches desired. It is no longer necessary to wait for somebody else to compile binary packages that fix a security hole. Um, unless you examine the patch and implement it yourself, you have no guarantee that the new binary package was built correctly and adequately fixes the problem. Now this is for the people that... Not not that worry about security... Like, everybody worries about security patches. Everybody wants, it, wants security patches. Some focus on it a lot more than others. Um, this is not to anybody's discredit, honestly. Good for you. You focus on, you focus on making sure everything's working right and securely on your system. Uh, I don't have a way of keeping easy track of all the packages I have installed on my system and how well, I know how what what they are, but um, what the security updates are. So you know that's another thing. It sort of requires you to have an idea of the patches there of what is happening in the patches and then you can just pop it at you and then you, that means that you can pull this linux system out whenever you want update it then too when whenever you want so you could do it the moment something big comes out the moment something small comes out or wait five years and do and uh really make it more stable than debian if that's something that you desire Uh, the goal of Linux from scratch is to build a complete and usable foundation level system. So foundation level, minimal, basically an arch system without, well, it's not basically, what am I saying? It's, it's like a minimal, it's a minimal distribution, but there is nothing else. Like there is no, there's nothing. It, 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 I, I don't know how else to say it. Um... Build, uh, if you do not wish to build your own Linux system from scratch, you may nevertheless benefit from the information in this book. Uh, because the book does have a lot of descriptions and such of what things do and why they're on your system. And it it, it is, well, it is a learning resource, whether you are building it or not. Now, again, we are building it, so we're using it, how, using it for its written purpose. But, the, again, it's Linux. This is Linux. It's a Linux book. 
You can do whatever you please with it. Um, if you do not wish to build your own Linux system from scratch, you may nevertheless benefit from the information in this book. There are too many other good resources, um, reasons to build your, I'm sorry, there are too many other good reasons to build your own LFS system, to list them all here. In the end, education is by far the most powerful of reasons. As you continue in your LFS experience, you will discover the power that information and knowledge truly bring. Okay, just some notes about LFS target, um, target, uh, target architectures. Uh, the primary target architectures of LFS are the AMD Intel 86, uh, x86, which is 32-bit, and x86-64, uh, which is almost everything other than, um, SPCs, uh, CPUs. On the other hand, the instructions in this book are also known to work with some modifications with the power PC and ARM PC and ARM CPUs. To build a system that uh, real that utilizes one of these CPUs, the main prerequisite, in s addition to those in the next page, is an existing Linux system, such as an earlier LFS installation, Ubuntu, Red Hat, SUSE, or other distribution that targets the architecture that you have. Also note that a 32-bit distribution can be installed and used as a host system on a 64-bit AMD Intel computer. For building LFS, the main uh, the gain of building on a um, a 64-bit compared to a 32-bit system is minimal. Uh, for example, in a test build of LFS 9.1, so that that would have been uh, that would have been twenty twenty. Yeah, that makes sense. That would have been twenty twenty. Uh, that would yes, that would have been uh, 2020. <sighs> for those that care, um, uh, for example, in a test build of LFS 9.1 on a core i7 4790 CPU based system using four cores, the following statistics were measured: the architecture, build time, and build size in this order: 32 bit. Took about two hundred uh, thirty nine point nine minutes. Again, I know I said days. It took me days. That's because my focus is not not wonderful, and this is a rough estimate. Again, it varies depending on the computer, and uh, the build size of three point six gigabytes. And then it also has the architecture of uh, thirty uh, sixty four bit, and then the build time of uh, two hundred thirty. 3.2 minutes, um, which is uh, comes to a build size of 4.4 gigabytes, which is comparably very small um, compared to the other any distribution. Honestly, Arch it's small, but it's not it's not that small. Like I have 128 gigs of space in this laptop right now. If you can see up there uh, where that uh, backslash is, that shows how much of my root partition is used, about 26%. It started at like 13. I mean, I've, I've I, you know, I've done things on it, obviously. I've had this system installed for six months. Um, so I've done stuff on it, and I've installed stuff on it. So, of course, that's 26%, but 13 for it to be 4.4 .4 gigabytes, one second, I believe, well, no, I don't have the energy to do the math right now. Well, no, I do, just whatever. Um, that is not a lot of space at all, comparably. That is, I, I'd say, 2 or 3%. I mean, I really, really don't think that there is any um, anything that would really take up. I mean, I guess that would work on the most minimal of the system. And I mean, and yeah. Um, as you can see, on the same hardware, the 64 build is only 3% faster. 
and 22% uh, larger than the 32-bit build. We plan these LFS as a lamp, uh, as a lamp server or a firewall. A 32-bit CPU may be uh, largely sufficient. On the other hand, several packages in BLFS now need more than four gigs of RAM to be built and or run. So that if you plan to use LFS as a desktop, the LFS authors recommend using building on a 64-bit system. The default 64-bit build that results from LFS is considered a pure 64-bit system. That is, it supports 64 bits as executables only. Building a multi-lib system requires compiling many applications twice, once for a 32-bit system and once for a 64-bit system. This is not directly supported in LFS because it would interfere with the educational objective of providing the instructions needed for a straightforward base Linux system. And it just has a link for some um, for a fork of the um, LFS book with um, uh, multi-lib. I'm not doing with multi. I'm not doing multi-lib. Um, I don't need more than I'm fine. I'm fine how it is, honestly. <coughs> Building an LFS system is not a simple task. I <coughs> I guess it is complicated. So. It is very much Arch Linux. The installation is very much Arch Linux, and I know what you're about to say, but it's very much Arch Linux in the sense that you have to read, and that's about it. It isn't very, it isn't very heavy on um, the. It isn't very. It isn't like a heavy cranial thing. I mean, you're you're not using every which part of your brain. You're not using a ton of different things you've never heard of. They're going to explain it to you. They're going to tell you what you're doing. And you, you can, even if you, if you want to, you can copy and paste it. Um, which generally ends up happening because you're just getting through it and all that um, without having to explain what exactly is, what exactly the command is doing. But, um, so yes, it's not simple. It's more complex, but it's not, it's also not, it's not something that you have to be a genius to do. Um, it requires a certain level of, exi of existing knowledge of Unix, of Unix system administration in order to resolve problems and correctly execute the commands listed. In particular, as an absolute minimum, you should already have the ability to use the command line or to, co or to copy or move files and directories, list directories and file contents, and change the current directory. It is also expected that you have a reasonable amount of using and installing Linux software. Um, because the LFS book assumes that at least this basic of a skill, um, the various LFS support forums are unlikely to be able to provide you with much assistance in these areas. You will find that your question regarding such basic knowledge will likely go unanswered, or you will simply uh, be referred to an LFS essential pre reading list. We can pull these up. I'm going to pull them up. I never. I find that I only used it on first build. I didn't use it on my second one. But you know, just in case we need it, we'll go back to other things. We'll look at this now again. This pre-reading is should not be in HTML. Why is it in? Oh, that's why. Never mind. To building and installing generic Unix software distribution under Linux. What's wrong with RPMs? Yeah, so this is this this is all really basic stuff. It's um introduction, unpacking the files, you know, unpacking tar balls. You and I know how to do this. It's tar xvf. I think they use xvpf in this. I'm not sure. Make you know these make. What's wrong with RPMs? Pack prepackaged binaries. It's telling what the issue is. Term cap and term info. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, this is just something we can refer to. And then we're also going to look at mine of information briefly. I don't want to spend too much time. First published on July twenty eighth, twenty fifteen. So this is going to be a little bit more, more um, more updated. This document is intended for users of open of users of open source operating systems who wish to install software direct from the original authors. 
yeah, this is basic. It's downloading the common files, patching, building and installing, building and installing documentation, consider settings and stripping, handing errors, um, post installation stuff. But we will keep that up just to make sure everything's okay. As stated earlier, the goal of LFS is to be, uh, build a complete uh, usable foundation level system. This includes all packages needed to replicate itself while providing a relatively minimal base from which to customize a more complete system based on choices of the user. This does not mean that LFS is the smallest system possible. Several important packages are included that are not strictly required. The list below documents the rationale for each package in the book. I am not going to read all this just so we can continue moving, but I will list it off. So we are going to install LC, uh, ACL, ATTR, uh, AutoConf, AutoMake, Bash, uh, which is, well, yep. Yeah. Um, BC, Bin Utils, uh, Bin Utils, Bison, uh, Bison, Bison, uh, BZip2, Check, Core Utils, Deja GNU, uh, Diff Utils, EF2 Sprogs, EF, E2, 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 FS, oh my god, E2, FS Sprogs, E2, FS Sprogs, Sprogs, this one, I, um, UDEV, Expat, File, Find Utils, Flex, Gawk, GCC, GDBM, Git Text, uh, Git X, uh, Glibc, Gimp, uh, not GIMP. GMP. Two different things. Please. Please. We are not installing GIMP. That's not what I, I misread it. I'm sorry. Um, GPR. GREP. GROF. GRUB. GZIP. IANA. Etc. Uh, and, um, and INET Utils. Uh, 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 int, 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 this one. I, Again, it looks like international tool, but there's a. It just won't. It won't highlight. I I don't. Whatever. IP route two. Uh, KBD, KMod, less libcap, uh, libelf, libfi, uh, libpipeline, libtool, Linux kernel, obviously, M4, make mandb, man pages, Mason. Uh, MPC, MPFR, Ninja, Encoses, OpenSSL, Patch, Perl, Package Config, ProCPS, uh, NG, PSMIS, um, Python 3, Readline, SSED, Shadow, Sysclog, um, Sysclogd, uh, Sysvinit. We are not using System D. This is, I guess, important if you care. Um, system D is ported to LFS if you would like to use it. I'm not going to. I'm going to use SysVinit like it um, was originally written for. Um, there are other things too. I believe Run it has an implementation for LFS that I've been meaning to try out actually on another system. But maybe I'll try it out on this once we finish it. But um, yeah. Um, tar, TCL, TextInfo, Util Linux, Wheel, Vim. Vim, XML parser, XZ utils, Zlib, and ZSTD. Okay. Technically, this is this is. I'm not gonna read through this. Um, so it just tells you exactly what it, what everything they're gonna type and tell you means. But honestly, we um. I know. <laughs> Uh, which sounds as uh, which sounds like I'm being a jerk, but I'm I, I'm being realistic. We just I just don't want to read through all this. All right, you're probably bored out of your mind already. That first part was a mix of me talking about stuff that I know and talking and just reading. So structure. This just explains you know what everything is. Introductions for going to build, etc. Arata, arata. 
The software used to create LFS system is current is constantly being updated and enhanced security warnings and bug fixes may be available after the book has been released. To check whether the package versions or uh, instructions in this release of the LFS need any modifications or accommodate security vulnerabilities or other bug fixes, please visit the errata before pro pro proceeding with your build. You should note any changes and apply them to the relevant section of the book as you progress through the LFS system. In addition, your Linux from scratch editors maintain a list of security vulnerabilities discovered after this book was released. To check whether there were any, any active security vulnerabilities, please visit that link prior to proceeding with your build. You should note any advisories um, and perform the steps to fix any security vulnerabilities as you progress. progress with building the LFS system. So we're just going to pop open a lot of... And at one time, we mentioned the old, uh, but it has become defunct. No known secure... Uh, LFS to... Uh, there are no known security vulnerabilities. We are A-OK. -okay. No known security vulnerabilities. We are okay. We don't need to do anything special. Okay, we are going to actually start with the instructions. So, how to build the LFS system. Okay, next. The LFS system will be built by using an already installed Linux distribution. I'm using Arch. Um, uh, this Linux existing Linux system, which is labeled as the host, will be using will be used as a starting point to provide necessary programs, including a compiler, linker, a shell, and uh, to build uh, and shell to build the new system. Select the development option during the distribution installation to be able to access these tools. As an alternative to installing a Separate distribution on your machine, you may wish to use a live CD from a commercial distribution. And it just lists what all the chapters do. Again, I'm not going to read through these. I just want to, I mean, this is sort of not it. <laughs> I mean, you can read these if you want um, on your own time then. I just, there's some things I just want to, I just want to sort of keep it going. What is new? Um, so they upgraded a bunch of all of the packages, probably all of the packages, uh, except for ZSTD, evidently. Um, but they did patch ZSTD. Um, then they removed. Oh yes, they removed these uh, system uh, system uh, system two fifty kernel five dot seventeen. They fixed this. They had this in one dot eleven eleven dot one. It was a useless patch because I was not using system D. That's all it was. Next. This is a change log. <laughs> see, this is what we mean when we say uh, B dubs is <laughs> as much as that is. I think that is a restaurant. <laughs> um, B dubs is uh, Bruce Dubs. He's been the managing editor. Look at all! Look at all he does. He's done almost every. He's. He is the writer. I mean, yeah. There's just one dude, I guess XR one one one, that does things occasionally. But Bruce Dubs is the master and commander of this entire thing, and I guess a Ken. Out oh, and a Pierre, but they were much less involved. This XRY one 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 is second to B Dubs. Th that I. Sorry, I just wanted to look at that. That's, wow, I didn't. I mean, he was managing editor, but he does so much. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, they have an IRC network. Interesting. Okay, Mirror Sites contact information. All right. If a question issue with questions accountable working through this book, please check the FAQ. Questions are often answered there. Okay. Okay. All right. 
help again this is the same thing like if you have issues with configuring a script or compilation minor minor things all right now we are preparing for the build officially and we're preparing this host system for preparing the host system for the build introduction the host tools needed for the building uh, for building lfs are checked and if necessary installed I believe I have all these installed because I actually started working on another LFS installation But I figured you know if I was already going to start if I was going to do an LFS video Why not do it now when I'm preparing to build it anyway? Bash 3.2 bin utils 3.2.13.1 uh, Bison 2.7 core utils 6.9 Diff utils 2.8.1 And then there's a script, a little script down here So we can check our um, We can check Our um, The versions of everything I'm just going to do this Got to pop up a name Vim. I believe I can just control shift V. Yep. Save. mod a plus w x a plus x documents lfs version check.sh okay Need to navigate there. Yep, clear. I always thought you could just run it from there. Or CD. Okay, we are not missing anything, right? Bash 3.2 bin, bash 3.2 bin, 2.13 by 2.7, bash 3.2, bash 5.1, oh yeah, we're definitely on track, uh, bin utils, 3.2.39, uh, bison 2.7, plenty, yes, yak is bison, can be bison, uh, Core utils 9.1, 6.9, 3 .8, 3 .8, wait, what? 3.8, yes, find utils 4.9, 4.2, gawk 4.0, gawk is. Five dot one. okay, yep, the new gawk is 5.1.1. One one. Um, GCC. 12.2 GCC is 12.2. Oh, oh my. Oh my. That's very. <laughs> I guess this is like if you're building on your own LFS system or something, it's really far behind. I don't know who would still be running GCC 4.8, even Debian. 
uh, would probably update faster than that, considering we are on 12.2.0 right now. Uh, grep 5.2.5.1a, uh, grep 3.7, yeah. Wait, what? Oh, 2.5. Yeah. Gzip 1.3, Gzip 1.12, yes, that's hot. I always got confused when it's double digit numbers because, you know, I'm reading the first number and saying, oh, that's lower, but it's higher. Uh, Linux version 5.19.7. Oh, yeah. It. No, I think I might be a little out of date. It's supposed to be 3.2. I have 5.19.7. I... I'm really on the edge. <laughs> uh, M4, 1.4.10. Uh, Okay, you can do make 4.0, 4.3, patch 2.4.5, 2.5.4, patch 2.7.6, 5.8.8. Uh, Python 3.10, 3.4, said 4.8, 4.1, 1.34, 1.22, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8. Six dot eight four dot seven xz five dot two dot six four five dot zero dot zero. We are all good and all is well. <sighs> okay, next up. Wow. All right. So this is just another description of what we're doing in the chapter. I guess because we. I guess I'll talk about one dot four briefly. Uh, LFS is, is designed to be built in one session. That is, the instructions assume that the system will not be shut down during the process. That does not mean that the system has to be done in one sitting. The issue is that certain procedures have to be re-accomplished after booting if resuming LFS at different points. For chapters 1 through 4, the cha they, these chapters are accomplished on the post system. When we start, and be careful of the following. Procedures are done, um, done at procedures done as the root user after section 2.4 need to have the LFS environment variable set for the root user. 5.6, uh, five, mount LFS partition must, be, partition must be mounted. These two chapters must be done as user LFS. Um, SU-LFS needs to be done before having any... Yada, 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 yada. Okay, I was going to end there because, you know, we can refer back to this later in the episode. In the um, episode. We shouldn't get that far, but maybe we will. I don't know. Maybe we'll get this done in one sitting, and I'll post a five-hour video of me doing this. I'm not sure that'll go down well, but, you know, we'll see what happens. It might end up that way. Um, it's 7... Uh, 7... 19. It's, it's almost 8 o'clock on the Eastern Seaboard. I have time, because it is a Friday. Thank God. Other partition issues. Okay, we're just going to move down here. The root partition, uh, a root LFS partition is not to be confused with the dash root directory. Of 20 gigabytes is good compromise for most systems. It provides enough space to build LFS and most of BLFS, but is small enough that multiple par multiple partitions can easily be created for experimentation. The swap partition, most distributions automatically create a swap partition. Generally, the size of the swap partition is about twice uh, about twice the amount of physical RAM. However, this is rarely needed. If uh, disk space is limited, hold the swap partition to two gigabytes and monitor the amount of disk swapping. If you want the hi to want to use the hibernation feature, uh, suspend a disk of Linux. It writes out the contents of RAM to the sw uh, swap partition before turning off the machine. In this case, the size of the swap partition should be at least as large as the system's installed RAM. Important, swapping is never good. For mechanical hard drives, you can usually tell just by listening to disk activities and observing how, to, how the system reacts to commands. For SSD, you will not be able to hear swapping, but can tell how much swap space is be used by using the top or free program. Using um, use of an SSD drive for a swap partition should be avoided. If possible, the first reaction to swapping should be to check for an unreasonable command, such as trying to edit a 5 gigabyte file. <laughs> if swapping becomes normal occurrence, the best solution is to purchase more RAM for your system. Odds are, you won't have the issue with this. I mean, 
I, you can technically compile LFS on a four gigabit gigabyte system. It'll take you a noticeably long time, but you can. I just want to get that written down there. All right. Um, I'd say anything over six is probably best. I mean, that's top notch. That's what you want. But I, you could probably do it on a four gigabyte system. I mean, alternatively, if you're trying to install it on a four gigabyte system, you could. Well, that's that's stuff it it'll explain later. But you can install LFS onto a USB and then um, take that root file system um, off of the USB or something like that. Take that root file system off of the USB, maybe in a live image or something, and copy it onto your computer. That's very long. That's th what I'm saying is something most people you would do if you want to, but again, it's not something you have to do. And it's out of your way. For this, again, since I'm not going to be daily, dri daily driving this, but I still want it on here, I'm just going to be installing it on here. Then whenever I want to use it, just plug it in my computer, boot it up, and there I have my uh, Linux from scratch system that I built myself. Um... Uh, the Grub BIOS Petition. The boot disk has been partitioned with G uh, GPT, and a small uh, 1 megabit partition must be created if it does not already exist. The partition is not formatted, but must be available for Grub to use during installation of the boot loader. This partition will normally be labeled BIOS Boot if using FDisk or have a code of EFO2 using GDisk. Convenience, par convenience partitions. Um... Boot EFI, this is one we need. This is for a system with UEFI. If I'm going to be booting from this, I need UEFI. This is a UEFI computer. That's all I'm going to do. Again, there's a bunch of different things it lists that it recommends. I'm not going to do those. Again, this is supposed to be you know straightforward for just doing it, for getting it done. Because I I enjoy doing Linux from scratch, but there's some amount there's there's an amount where you cannot be as in depth as they want you to be. If a swap, if a if a boot partition, a swap partition, and a root partition works for the world and most Linux distributions, then it is all right with me. But again, if you want to do that, that is there for your use. Um, so we're just gonna come in real quick. Clear. Uh, um, that must be okay. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna. Swap EFI system. Right. Yes. Oh, thinking of this, I should at some point I should probably do an LF uh, Arch Linux installation. Obviously, I'm doing LFS right now. Quit. Okay, good. And yes, for anyone wondering, the name of my machine is Windows Users Graveyard. That's just a fact. <laughs> okay. Now you have a couple different options here. Um, 
you can use whatever you want you, uh, for operating for uh, file systems. You can use X, uh, exe4, exe3, exe, exe2. I would never go further back than ext4 except for super niche cases. The same thing, again, FAT32, that's on a specialized purpose. That is for EFI systems. NTFS. No, I mean, I that that is the, I believe that's Microsoft proprietary file system. I'm not sure what it's used for, but I think FAT is too. Now I think about it, but I'm not. Don't quote me on that. Riser FS, uh, JFS, and XFS. Uh, it does not f put better FS or better better FS on it, or BTR FS. You can do that by any means. You by all means you can do that. And I honestly, I'm gonna use EXT4. I like using EXT4, but it should be noted that. Better FS is still a valuable, it's still a very, very good file system. It works for any use case, just like ext4. Uh, again, outside of those niche ones that require specific uh, file systems. Uh, dev SDA. Ah, didn't do so didn't pseudo just has to run through this real quick. Good. Do it where I know it best. Okay. Oh. Dfat swap ext4. Here comes an important part of the system. Uh, just I remember it. setting Linux from scratch LFS variable. This will continue. This is a this is a reoccurring thing. So we just got to do it in our own um, our home is bash was it bash bash profile and the root bash profile. So I'm just gonna do, go into root real quick. Export. That right. Mm, God. All right. And then we just 
just need to learn. And then that means echo. Uh, for those unfamiliar, exec LFS means it resets your bash shell. Uh, so it just ran through everything, and now that's why it added MNT LFS. It works. All right, echo LFS root dot bash profile. In addition, the shell specified in the Etsy bash. Another that's interesting. I think I'm gonna keep it as it is. I mean, I'm gonna, I guess, in this case, add for the user and root, also add it to the bash RC. And I know I'm using bash. Yeah. In and in root bash for underscore profile. Enter the export and above. Oh, bash RC. it the wrong way. Cool. Okay. Well, I just need to make sure that was all set. Mounting the new petition. Make the OPV. Okay. All right. I'm just going to make, uh, make the... So at this point, you're making the point where it's going to be mounted where the LFS, so the LFS actual, like, you know, where the actual LFS root partition will be mounted, which is where you're going to install all these applications to, or software, all the software to. No. It's MNT, so... I don't know. I always just do mount. I don't really do all. This. I don't go through all this. Some pseudo mount. I mean the V and T. I get it, but I don't. I mean I. I never use it. Uh, this should just say lost and found. Yes. And 
I'm also gonna uh, real quick I'm gonna edit my F stab file. That should auto mount it then whenever I restart my system. With this though, one second, I need to um, add swap into the, one second. Good. All right, let's hit next. You know, this actually might be easier if I just moved it over here. Um, I mean, yeah, let's just do that. Control. Table of contents. Uh, now, if you see, I sort of started working on it. Yeah, I, I had to completely clear it out just to make sure we did this. The chapter includes a list of packages that need to be downloaded. Uh, list the uh, listing version numbers corresponds to different versions of the software that are known to work. This book is based on their use. All right. Download. Okay, I'm not gonna read all that, um, but. Again, this is just we're just downloading packages. Oh. I should probably just log into my root account. Um. Nope, that did not log. I miss hit. Felt it.
See. Oh, we gotta make it sticky. V A plus W T. Download all of the packages. Um. Oh, uh, W get. Gotta pop this open. So I gotta exit real quick. Um, w get list. Do this w get. I didn't realize there was so many options for uh, w get until I first downloaded it. The first first downloaded all the tarballs for um, for LFS. All right. So at this point, it's just waiting. It shouldn't take too long. I have pretty good connection. Again, GCC takes like is one of the largest files, which is I, it takes longer than the kernel to compile which is shocking to me um, because a kernel kernel will take a long time to compile so most of this is going to be it's going to be a more waiting than i think most people have ever done in their life it is a it is a waiting game quite literally oh i picked this fun little thing up that was a while back but it's this Hourglass, it's only about like 30 seconds or something, but you flip it over and then it floats to the top. It's one of the coolest little trinkets I think I've ever gotten. It was like $15. I don't know where I got it. I think it was like some novelty store or something. I was, I really, honestly, I've been getting a kick out of it the whole time, so. Sorry, that's unrelated. Let's see. What else? Um. What else? I was debating live streaming this, and I mean, I probably wouldn't have had hardly any people, but I was debating on live streaming it just because it, this is more fun with a person, or when, even talking to a camera is better than just doing it by yourself, if I'm being completely honest. But, hang on. I also. There's other things I can do as well. Um, that's those right there. That's that's the camera. Um, I don't really have anything. Um, that's those right there. Um, no. I hope everyone's day is going pretty well. You know, it's been um, it's it's been. Uh, time <laughs> um, today uh, you know school and everything it's been my first couple weeks which is why my schedule has been so off with uploading I am expecting to finally get this uh, I'm trying to get a double header newscast because I didn't do last week I'm going to do last week and this week um, you know last week again I'm going to cut it short a little bit because there's not as much I need to cover most people have heard of all these releases but I'm still going to do the uh, newscast I had scheduled for last week uh, and, uh, and this week and this week it's simultaneously p tomorrow so this is Friday so it's Saturday because there was just so so much that um, 
with the school and everything, school restarting and everything, it just it, it's been it's been hectic. So, and I, I don't know. It, it's getting used to the schedule and fitting this into is just something that's taken me a second. I'm expecting some of my videos to start taking and more of my videos to be recorded on 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 the weekends. Oh, um, I guess it doesn't really matter, but in case you notice the difference, I, um, I said I was going to install vo uh, Void, um, LFS onto this. This is not going to work. Um, so, there are five partitions on here, two of which are, uh, three of which relate to this, uh, Lubuntu system that I'm doing all the gaming videos on. Well, that I'm planning on doing the gaming videos on, because I haven't come through with more than one. Which has just again been the result of this new schedule I'm dealing with. And, um, and I also downloaded, and we can talk about this and my reasons why the comments or whatever, but I, I downloaded the entirety of Wikipedia onto this thing, which is like 86 gigabytes, which doesn't sound right, but excluding all of the extra talk and such. There's only realistically about about 86 gigabytes of data, uh, but again, with the talk, with the people, with all the talk pages, and all the um, and all the bug and all the reports and all that and such, it would be like terabits of tampon terabits of data. I mean, there's a reason they have servers all over the world. I'm not entirely sure where they are, but I know there's a couple in the States, but then there's a ton elsewhere, too. Oh, it is done downloading. Not a ton. Wikipedia isn't huge. I don't mean ton like, you know, metric or anything. I don't mean like a metric ton or anything. It's just a lot. Um, Alright, this is just MD5 uh, checksum. What are you doing in there? No, I'm not deleting my bash profile. This is a copy it made. I don't know why it did that. C L S A. C bash profile it's still there. MD5 sums. Bing. Um. Um. I just gotta give myself permissions for my non uh, root account for that file. Oh. Um, alright. Now for this file, MD5 sums. Pop D. 
no such file. Oh, oh my god. Okay, 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 okay. Everything looks okay. Okay, next. Oh, this is just a list of packages. We don't need to go through all this. Trust me. Actually, there's just one thing I want to check. Yep, sys Vinit consolidated patch, no system D. I just needed to double check. But I'm glad they got rid of that. It was just useless tarballs, because we're not using system D. Introduction. Oh, wait, I skipped that, sorry. Oh, final preps. In this chapter, we will perform a few additional tasks to prepare for building the temporary system. We will create a set of directories in the, LF uh, in, uh, the LFS... Um, LFS in LFS for uh, additional for installation of the temporary tools and add unprivileged users uh, to do and add an unprivileged user to reduce risk and create an appropriate build environment for that user. We will also explain the unit of time we use to measure measure how long LFS packages take to build or SBUs and give some information about package test suites. So we are moving on to making the chain the making build chain so we can install LFS. It, it's very circular. I'll, or not circular. I'll explain it when we get to it. First, we need to create a limited directory layout in the LFS file system. So this is very basic. You know, it's your user files, your users and such. So um, I'm just gonna run this. One good thing about this, and I know I said that people just copy and paste, this, it's not something we really need to explain, alright, we don't need to go in and type it, alright, I guess for muscle memory you could, but look, look, you can just tell what it's doing right now, it's making, um, it's making points that are mountable for some reason on LFS, um, for Etsy, LFS on uh, Etsy, var, um, and then, then, um, LFS dash user dash bin dot uh, lib and sbin so it's making all these different it explains what it's doing that's well that's a great thing about the dash v with things like this it gives you a verbose almost ev almost almost every almost all software if it has dash v that as part of an option that is verbose you don't have to use it but that is verbose in it it can help you understand what's happening This is just doing sim links, and then the same thing. Uh, nope, this is making a lib sixty four. Programs in chapter six will be compiled with a cross compiler. Oh, we don't see installed to create this directory. Make to your okay. I, I know I keep clearing it. Maybe that's bothering people, and I apologize. I just, I just like having control of my system, and I just, I just need to clear it for my own. Group. It just, it bothers me if it's not clear. That's all. Oh, already. 
already exist. I guess I never took the. I guess I didn't delete that. But that's what you would do. And then user add. Double check something, LFS. Interesting. LFS is already in there. All right. Um. Uh, let's just add um user mod uh s um bin bash and then Bin bash. Um. Uh, directory to shoot into prefix directory shell uid. What if I here? Then just add it in. Oh, okay, it already exists. Okay. I just need to make sure everything was okay. I wasn't sure exactly whether I'd set it up right the first time, and I, I didn't want to be wrong, because, or else, it, there is one thing where if you don't do something, sometimes it can be sensitive, so if you don't do something exactly right, it might throw it off. Um, oh, password. I, this doesn't need to be super secure. Um, LFS full access. Okay. Good. 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 Oh, login. Okay. Oh, I guess because I'm already root. Okay. Um. Well, wait, wait, wait. Exit. I don't want to be in too many shells at one time. So exit. In some host systems. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. When logged in as user LFS, the initial shell is usually a login shell, which reads the Etsy profile of the host, probably containing some settings and environment variables, and then ba uh, dot bash underscore profile. The exact end i dot 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 slash bin slash bash command is the dot bash profile um, uh, is uh, command in the dot slash profile uh, the dot slash uh, in the dot bash profile file. Um, replaces the running shell with a new one with a completely empty environment except for the home term and FPS1 variables. This um, ensures no unwanted and potentially hazardous environment variables from your host system leaked into the build environment. Okay. Now the new instance of the shell is a non-login shell which does not read and execute the contents of Etsy profile. But rather reads and executes the bash rc. Create the bash rc file now. set.h command turns off bash's hash function hash function hashing is ordinarily a useful feature bash uses a hash table to remember the full path of executable files to avoid searching the path time and time again to find the same executable however the new tools should be used as soon as they are installed by switching off the hash function the shell will always search the path when the program is to be run as such the shell will find the newly compiled tools in LFS tools slash bin as long as they are available without remembering a previous version of the same program provided by the host distro um, in dash user dash bin or dash uh, not dash slash user slash bin or bin umask 022 uh, sets, uh, sets the user file creation mask to um, sets it to uh, 022 that ensures that newly created files and directories are only writable by their owner but are readable and executable by anyone. Which is, I believe, sticky. I believe that's sticky. I, uh, I don't, I'm not, um... One second. Okay. Sticky means that even if multiple users have write permission, can delete. Oh, it's okay. They can write, but they can't delete. All right. LFS equals MNT LFS. That's just setting the area. Uh, the uh, LFS variable should be set as chosen mount point. LC all equals POSIX. Um, controls all the localization of certain programs making their messages following the conventions of a specified country. LFS target uname.m LFS Linux GNU. The LFS target variable sets a non-default but compatible machine description for use when building our cross compiler and linker when cross compiling our temporary toolchain. More information is contained in toolchain technical notes. Path equals user slash bin. Again, uh, many modern Linux distributions have merged uh, bin and user bin. When this is the case, the standard path variable needs to be ju needs just to be set to user bin for the path chapter six environment. When this is not the case, the following um, line uh, adds bin to the path. Then this line, I I'm not going to go too in depth with it, but this line um, this says that if bin is not a symbolic link, then it has to be added to the path variable. And then this line, which is path equals LFS, LFS tools bin, uh, sem, uh, col uh, tools bin colon path. By putting um, LFS tools bin ahead of the standard path, the cross compiler installed at the beginning of chapter 5 is picked up um, by the shell immediately after installation. This, combined with turning off hashing, limits the risk uh, that the compiler from the host should be used instead of the cross compiler. Again, this um, 
this if this uh, in chapter five and six if this variable is not set configure scripts may attempt to load configuration items specific to some distributions from user share config site on the host system and again now again he said it earlier and I'll say it again it doesn't say it here but host systems because this is a you're building a guest system on a host system you do not want anything from the host system to mess with the, the I'll I'll say the purity of the um, of this guest system which sounds really weird I'm sure but like that's what it is you don't want to mess with the how um you don't want to you don't want to take this uh, config site or whatever. You don't want to. Um, you don't want to accidentally leak. You don't want to accidentally mess up your installation, your entire installation, and not be able to run your own your LFS system because something from your something from your uh, something from your host system leaked onto your guest system. Sorry for the weird cut. I uh, had to pick up the phone. All right. Um, all right. Where were we? We're just finishing this up. We already did this. Okay. Important. Several commercial distributions add non-documented in, in add a uh, commercial distributions add a non-documented inst uh, instant um, instant instantiation. I wow. I, instant instant instantiation 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 wow of uh, etsy bash dot bash rc to the uh, initialization of bash this file has the potential to modify the lfs users environment in ways that can affect the building of critical lfs packages to make sure the lfs users environment is clean check for the presence of etsy bash dot bash rc and if present move it out of the way as the root user run this file Oh, as root. Oh, I'm not in wheel. Mm. Exit. Pseudo. Ew, that was wrong. Hmm? Go through all the hoops. Okay. All right. That's clear. And then finally, add the environment variable fully prepared. This is the sourced LFS. That's why it only says LFS and all that. Many people would like to know beforehand approximately how long it takes to compile and install each package. Because Linux from scratch can be built on many different systems, it is impossible to provide accurate time estimates. The biggest package, uh, which is uh, Glibc, will take approximately 20 minutes on the faster systems, but could take up to three days. It won't take three days on my system, I promise you. Um, instead of providing actual times, the, uh, three days, dear God. Um, instead of providing actual times, the standard build unit SBU measure will be used instead. The SBU measure works as follows. The first package will be compiled from this book in, first package to be compiled from this book is bin utils in chapter five. The time it takes to compile this package is what will be referred to as the standard build unit or SBU. All other compile times will be expressed relative to this time. For example, consider a package whose compilation time is 4.5 SBUs. This means that if a system took 10 minutes to compile and install the first pass of bin utils, it will take approximately 45 minutes to build this example package. Unfortunately, most um, unfortunately most build times are shorter than the one for uh, not unfortunately uh, most build times are shorter than the one for bin utils. In general, SBUs are not entirely accurate because they depend on many factors, including the host system's version of GCC. 
It provided to, uh, to give an estimate of how long it might take to install a package, but the numbers can vary by um, as much as dozens of minutes in some cases. One second, I need to run something real quick. Neo patch. How many cores do I have? Four. Okay. Or just building with make j4. Okay, I'm just going to do this. Make j4, make j4, make j4. Okay, I'm just going to keep that in my bash history so I know it's there. Alright, when multiple processors are used um, in this way, the SBU unit in the book will vary even more. Most packages provide test suite. Running every running the test suite for a newly built package is a good idea because it can provide a sanity check, indicating that everything is compiled correctly. A test suite that passes its set of checks usually proves that the package is functioning as the developer intended. It does not, however, guarantee that the package is totally bug-free. Some test suites are more important than others. For example, the test suites for the core toolchain packages. GCC, bin utils, and glibc are the most uh, uh, of utmost importance to their essential role in proper in a properly functioning system. The test suites for GCC and glibc can take very long time to complete, especially on slower hardware, but are strong, strongly recommended. Running the test, uh, just a uh, note: we won't be running the test suites at five and six, as it is, as it says, impossible since the programs are compiled with a cross compiler. Alright, let's get ready to compile. Introduction. This part is divided into three stages. First, building a cross compiler and its associated libraries. Second, use this cross toolchain to build several um, several utilities in a way that isolates them from the host distribution. Third, enter the truth environment, um, which is change root, which stands for change root which uh, further improves host isolation to build the remaining tools needed for the build to uh, build the final system. With this part begins the real work of building a new system. It requires much care in ensuring that the instructions are followed exactly as the book shows them. You should try to understand what they do and whatever your eagerness and whatever and um, whatever your eagerness to finish your build, you should refrain from bi blindly type them from blindly typing them as shown but rather read documentation where there is something you do not understand. Also, keep track of your typing and... Sorry. Um, also, keep track of your typing and the output of commands by sending them to a file using the T utility. This allows for better diagnosing if something gets wrong. The next section gives a technical introduction to build processes, while the following one contains very important general instructions. Okay, this section explains some of the rationale and technical details behind the overall build method. It is not essential to immediately understand everything. Most of this information will be clearer after performing an actual build. The overall goal of five and six, chapter 5 and 6 is to produce a temporary area that contains a, good, uh, known, uh, uh, contains a known good set of tools that can be isolated from the host system. By using truth, the commands in the remaining chapters will be contained within that environment, ensuring a clean, trouble-free build of the target LFS system. The build process has been designed to minimize the risks for new users and provide the most educational value at the same time. Now, the build process is based on the process of cross-compilation. Cross-compilation is, um, is normally used for building a compiler and its toolchain for a different... I am sorry, this is just um, compiler and its toolchain for a machine different from the one that is used for the build. This is not strictly needed for LFS since the machine where the new systems will run is the same as the one used for the build. 
but cross-compilation has a great advantage that anything that is cross-compiled cannot depend on the host environment. This, this is very, very, very technical. We aren't going to go through this, but this just explains exactly what cross-compilation is in certain terms you should know. Um, again, I'm going to be leaving a link to all of this to the book and such in the description in the description i've um i've 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 done this before i've installed linux from scratch before two or three times now so this is just this is old hat to me um and again we want to keep it moving i don't want to uh bore, bore, bore the pants off of you but um this will give you something in the to read then if you would like just so you know exactly what we're doing. General compilation instructions. All right, so we are almost there, almost. When building packages, there are several assumptions made within the, the instructions. Several of the packages are patched before compilation, but only when the patch is needed to circumvent a problem. A patch is often needed in both this and the following chapters, but sometimes in only one location. Therefore, do not be concerned if instructions for a downloaded patch seems to be missing. Warning messages about offset or fuzz may also be encountered when applying a patch. Do not worry about these warnings, as the patch was still successfully applied. During the compilation of most packages, there will be several warnings that scroll by on the screen. These are not normal. These are not. These are normal and can be say and can safely be ignored. These warnings are as they appear, warnings about deprecated but not invalid use of C or C++ syntax. C standards, um, C standards change fairly often and some packages still use, an older stand use the older standard. This is not a problem but, the prompt, uh, but does prompt the warning. That makes that, 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 that is one of the most helpful things ever because there were a couple times when I first installed, when I, my, I did, ran through my first installation where I was seeing this wall of warnings it was a wall of warnings well because when you're compiling you see a wall of text generally i mean you just but i just kept seeing warning 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 i thought there was an issue um and then, so i started looking around the book and then i came back to this page and i was like oh that, that, that's what that is it just it does throw you off especially if you're new to using this so, for reference, I've never, well, I can, I can talk more about this, um, but I've never actually used Gen 2. <laughs> I tried installing it once, it, uh, like, twice or maybe three times. It never worked out for me. I've been meaning to try it in another virtual machine, I just haven't gotten there yet. I'll probably do a video on, I'll probably do a installation video at some point, but, um, yeah. Sorry, aside from that. Um, warning messages during the C++, okay. Check one last time that the LFS variable has been set up properly. Yes. Make sure that the output shows the path to the, L to the LFS partition's mount point. MNT LFS, finally to import an item to see emphasize. The build instructions assume that the host system requirements, including symbolic links, have been set have been set properly. Bash is the shell in use. SH is a symbolic link to Bash. Uh, user bin awk is a public is a symbolic link to gawk. User bin uh, user bin yak is a symbolic link to bison, or a small script that executes bison. We checked this out earlier. I saw it. It's we're okay. Important. To reestablish the build process, um, we emphasize place all the sources and patches in a directory that will be uh, accessible from the truth environment. Yes, ls. Yep. Use the tar program, extract the package to be built. And show you the LFS user when extracting the package. All methods to get the source code tree being are being um, all methods to get the source code tree being built in position 
um, except extracting the package tarball and unsupported. Notably, use cp-r to copy the source uh, code tree somewhere else. Um, using cp-r to copy the source code tree somewhere else uh, can destroy links and timestamps in the sources tree and cause building failure. Change the book, uh, change the directory created when the package was extracted. Follow the book, book's instructions for building the package. Change back to sources directory. Delete the extracted source directory unless instructed otherwise. This does not mean, and I figured this out the hard way. No. This does not mean delete the source file. Do not <laughs> delete the source file. Please do not delete the source file after you're done compiling it because you compile this stuff like three times and you need to hold on to the source code tree because we. There's not a 100% chance that you won't need to refer back to it later. Just, uh. Just a fair warning on my. On, um, just a fair warning. Okay. This chapter shows how to build a cross compiler and its associated tools. Although here cross comp compilation is faked, the principles are the same as for real cross toolchain. The programs compiled in this chapter will be installed into the LFS tools directory to keep them separate from the files installed in the following chapters. The libraries, on the other hand, are installed into their final place since they pertain to the system we want to build. You guys ready to compile? Wow. All right. This I actually want to set a timer for. I was never sure. Um, I was never sure about how long one SBU was on my first build. Okay. So for this, I'm going to need one SBU. That's going to be one standard build unit. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make dear the oh wait we need to unpack it the um cd sources <coughs> ls sudo oh, what am i doing it's not sudo tar xvf what is it it's bin utils Three dot uh, no two dot three nine tar dot xe all right so it's gonna unpack that I know I didn't need to do xvf but I like I I like the verboseness which not everybody agrees with me on I know they don't but I I like it. these we can open them back up if we need them all right we're gonna be configuring bin utils but just so we know what we're doing uh, prefix equals LFS tools that tells that it tells a configure script configure script to prepare to install the bin utils program in the L LFS slash tools directory we will be using this in every single uh, cross toolchain compilation and installation um, step so that's like the next four or five comp uh, compilations uh, then also uh, with sysroot um, equals LFS that means that for cross compilation, this tells the build system to look in LFS for the target system libraries as needed. Target LFS uh, underscore target because the machine description is in the uh, because the machine description in the LFS target variable is slightly different than the value returned by config dot guest script. This switch will tell the configure script to adjust bin utils build system for building a cross linker. Curious, one second. Then also disable NLS. This disables inter internationalization. 
as uh, I18N is not needed for the temporary tools, this enable um, G Pro uh, G Pro FNG equals no. This disables building G Pro uh, G Pro FNG, which is not needed for the temporary tools, and then disable disable were I don't know how to say it better. W error. Um, this prevents the build from stopping in the event that there were warnings from the host's compiler. Okay. I just need to check something. Echo. LFS. TBT. Oh, cool. I missed that. Um. Okay. Oh, I didn't start the timer. That took like two seconds. So I had like a second or something on. Alright, it's gonna make it. This is just compilation. This is what's gonna take most of the time is the installation is just copying files mostly and then the uh but the comp but making it means that the, that that's what you have to prepare the and con configuring means it configures the make file make install means that it's installing whatever you just made and then the make the whatever you just compiled and then make is the compilation and compilation is what takes the most time even with things like gcc which i talked about takes a long time can take a very long time it's um but yeah gcc can take a it does take a very long time or you know 10 15 minutes it can take you know more time than you'd expect but it takes a good amount of time this um that make install is like two seconds it literally just copies files that's all it is That was a minute 30. Again, give or take a second, so minute 32. That's not going to take too long. You also master the art of configuring and making files uh, con configuring and installing um, and making and compiling files okay. installation of cross GCC GCC requires a GIMP uh, GMP MPFR uh, MPFR MPFR and MPC packages. As these packages may not be included in your host distro, they will be uh, built with GCC. Unpack each package into the GCC source directory and rename the resulting directory so the GCC build procedures will automatically use them. The procedure is the same as every other chapter. First extract the GCC tarball. Okay. Yep. This is what I did, right? I don't understand. See, 12 SBUs. This is going to take about 12 minutes. 18 minutes. 18, 18 minutes. This is just unpacking, and then this command is just unpacking 
these uh, uh, these tar files for um, these tar files so we can use it to un so we can use it to um, use them as dependencies because that's what GCC requires at least that's what we're doing with GCC now Oh, That just shows everything that happened. Okay. Alright, we are all good then. Clear. And then on x eighty four six on x eighty six sixty four host uh, set the default directory to lib. DOV build. With G, uh, now again, configuration options. With glibc 2.36, uh, 2 it specifies the version of glibc which will be used on the target. This is not relevant to the libs to the libc of the host distro because everything compiled by pass one GCC will run in the true environment, which is isolated from libc and the host distro. Um, with new lib, uh, since working with since a working C lib uh, C library is not yet available, this ensures that inhibit l in that the inhibit l uh, libc constant is defined when building uh, libgc libgcc. This prevents the compiling of any code that requires libc support. And then without headers, when creating a complete cross-compiler, GCC requires standard headers compatible with the target system. For our purposes, these headers will not be needed. This switch prevents GCC from looking for them. Uh, disable shared, this switch forces GCC to link its internal library statically. We will need this because the shared libraries require glibc, which is not yet installed on the target system. Disable multi-lib on x86-64. LFS does not support multi-lib configuration. This switch is harmless for x86. And then all these disable things you see down here. These switches disable support for the decimal floating point extension, threading, libatomic, libgomp, uh, libquadmath, um, libssp, libvtv, and the C++ standard library, respectively. These features will f uh, fail to compile when building a cross compiler and are not necessary for the task of cross compiling the temporary libc. And then enable languages. Um, this option ensures that only the C and C++ compilers are built. These are the only languages needed right now. Okay. I'm going to hit make and then we're just going to I'm just gonna probably cut the video up so we don't need to we don't need to just watch walls of text go by the entire time. Well, now that I guess I'll talk about I'll find something to talk about real quick, but I'll, I'll probably end up cutting it just because it's so long. Nope. Nope. <laughs> there we go. Um. So just some interesting things, and I guess, uh, so I was talking about that I might do a Gen 2 stream or a Gen 2 video. This all depends on what's happening, I guess, because with Gen 2, it's such a... 
I've had some. Uh, the, 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 Gen two does not like working for me. I think it's because I have weird hardware. It's just a fact. My hardware is, you know, it's weird. That's that's all I can really say about it. I mean, this hardware doesn't exist. It's it's locked down proprietary hardware. It's it's a Chromebook. It's a converted Chromebook. I've mentioned this before. It's a converted Chromebook. I switched over to the lights to the uh, light side. Oh. I switched over to the light side. It's running Arch Linux right now, but it has locked down. It has locked. It, it's really the system is really locked down, so it's it's hard to. You know. It's really locked down, so I think it might just be that Gen two doesn't like it, which I understand. There are Intel drivers that this thing requires, and if you know anything about Intel, that uh, and I didn't real I honestly didn't realize this until a little bit ago, but Intel uh, Wi-Fi drivers are all proprietary. Why? I don't know. I, again, I have this. I have this over. I have this thing. Well, I don't think it should be proprietary. It makes no sense for it to be proprietary. Because when it comes to something like Wi-Fi, it, it is something that you need to run your computer with. And when it's proprietary, what are they even making money? I mean, it's not like they're making any money off of it. What are they gaining from keeping it proprietary? I understand that there's this myth that companies seem to think that if, it, if it's running... Um, Seem to think that if it's re uh, not running, not running Linux. If it's um, if it's open source, it's less secure. There is no proof for this concept. There is actually anti-proof for this concept. It, there, there is proof going the other way because if you ever get a group of programmers together, a group of open source users, whatever, anybody who's you know works with open source software and you t and codes it specifically, and you put them on a GitHub and you. Sh and they suggest an app, tell them, oh, there's this GitHub, they'll probably, if they feel so inclined, which a lot of people do, let's be honest, a lot of people look at the source code. They can audit that code. They can read, they can read that code. They can audit that code. They can tell whether it's secure or not. If it is not, if there's something that somebody messed up with it, they can fix it, and they frequently do. And it's not like these projects are just getting updated by any old Joe Schmuck, they have to, the, uh, any, um, merges, any, um, any project merges have to go through somebody. They, they, somebody has to say, you know what, this code looks okay. So unless you have, you have all of the, unless you have like 50 people, not 50 people, unless you have somebody on the inside that has high enough privileges that can be like, you know, I really want this the security vulnerability in our code, then if they say, oh, I really want the security vulnerability in our code, you would have to have somebody within the project who, you would have to have somebody in the project say that and say, you know, I give the check on this. But they also have to be high enough to be able to give the check on this, which they probably wouldn't because if, if they are high enough in that project, that means they're committed to the project and they don't want to see it fall unless they're really committed to whatever you're doing, but the odds are that nobody is that organized. I mean, I, I do mean it. Security vulnerabilities are not the result of open, are not the result of open source software being open source. Security vulnerabilities happen. It's a fact of life. They happen with Windows, they happen with uh, Apple. Do you want to talk about all this? Because I can go in-depth with it. I can tell you about WannaCry. I can tell you about anything that's ever happened. I mean, you know, you could argue iOS is a malware within itself. Uh, not iOS. Well, yes, iOS and Mac OS, but that's a discussion for a different day. I mean, so is Windows, to be honest. But that's, I just, that's my own personal view. But you have to understand, it's... <laughs> Vulnerabilities happen open source or closed source. You probably don't know about the closed source ones because, yeah, they'll tell you there's security patches, but the people who are getting the updates where they tell you there's security patches don't pay any amount of attention. Whereas 
somebody uh, on specifically Linux. I would almost say exclusively Linux because of what we do. We are open source. We audit code. We look at code. We say, "Ooh, you know what? I enjoy doing this. Let's look at let's let's see how this thing works." Or you look at it because you know you're trying to contribute upstream or something. The the just because somebody is not being paid to edit the code does not mean that it is insecure. And I'm tired of saying this. And you know I haven't said it on here, but I've had to explain it to people in like disk and, and servers and, and Discord servers and IRC chats and such, which sounds odd because IRC is mostly Linux users. Let's be honest. But there are a couple, there are a couple Windows users and such, or just people who are distrustful of open source or wouldn't use it on the daily. But I mean to assume something is less secure because there's it has it's more open is stupid i mean that that applies to a lot of different things let's be honest but for this particular issue if the source is open the code is open you can see it you can edit it that means everybody and their mom who knows how to read code can look at this code tell you what's happening with it and whether it's a privacy concern or not so that is not a big deal. That, as a matter of fact, I'd say that's better than closed source, which I know, I understand people are being paid, but people who are being paid make mistakes. There are much more people, there are more people who are not being paid just looking at this code than those who are being paid at Microsoft who have, you know, there's only a bit, maybe this many people at Microsoft who are professionals. Please don't misunderstand me, they're professionals. But there's only maybe this many people looking at this closed source proprietary, this, clo this closed source software, making sure there's no security vulnerabilities. And they find them, they do their job. But then there's this many people looking at all of the code uh, with open source projects. Again, you know, rough estimate. But there's, there's, you know, a bunch of people looking at this code for the this soft, this code for the, um, for the program. How is nobody out of this many people going to be like, if that is a security flaw? Or. It better yet, just like deny them, deny this merge because odds are, if they're trying to merge a security flaw, the go people are going to look at it, not necessarily as a security flaw, but they're gonna triple check it because these are the owners of the code. They wrote the code. They want to make sure their project isn't being corrupted. So they're gonna look at this code that somebody's trying to merge under their GitHub or whatever, and they're gonna say, you know what? I don't like it. Denied. If they like it, they'll put it in. If they don't, they don't. That means that it has to go through multiple layers of people. So it goes through, A, this person who may be doing something malicious, may not, might have just misprogrammed something, things happen. But then you also might have, you know, then you have to go through the owner, or the, at least somebody who's committed to the project, who is going to look at it and say, who has to look at it and say, I approve of this. So they either see a vulnerability with their eyes closed and just say go, or they... Or they, you know, look it over and say, and they and they don't see a vulnerability, which is ninety nine percent of the time, and they don't accept it in, or they don't, or they don't, or they don't accept this, they don't accept this margin or whatever. And then even then, assuming maybe maybe the owner or whoever's invested, you know, they're busy, they just click it on accident, or they they don't see it because maybe they were rushed or something, maybe they misclicked or something. They can, A, always review it and delete it. That's notable. They can always review it and delete this code. And all these people, all these programmers that are looking at this, like, well, you know, not that it's a wide, I mean, it is a good amount of people. It's like this many people looking at this code and saying, this looks good. And then they have to say this looks good. And the project owner has to be like, okay, it looks good. I'm happy. But if it doesn't look good, that project owner will be like, I care about this project. I do not I I do not want my users to have these security vulnerabilities and I don't and I sure as hell don't want this um I don't want to lose users because believe it or not burnout is a huge issue in the open source because you know because there's just it, burnout is a huge issue within the open source and I could talk about this for hours but the fact is that you know 
to say it is closed source, to say open source is not secure, and you know, that's what I've been, just, it all draws back to this. To say open source is insecure is almost a slap in the face to anybody that's done actual, any, any actual work in open source. To say open source is not secure is to is a slap in the face to not only the creator but the people who use that product because they they know what goes into this. The people who use it are also generally the people who will review it. So the people who review it look at this and they're like, "This code looks good." But for you to tell them that they don't know how to use their own their own judgment. And and to look at the owner and tell uh, the owner, the operator, the developer, and tell them they don't know what they're doing is. I said it earlier, and you know I could say it forevermore. It's a slap in the face, and it's wrong. I mean, it is so wrong. There is nothing insecure about open source, and I don't know how many times I have to say it. I shouldn't have to say it. It's been said so many times by so many different people. And then there's just some mega corporation like Intel or whatever that, you know, has no reason to have closed source drivers, let's be honest. Look, they are free online. One second. Um, what, what are they called? Uh, Intel uh, IWL Wi Fi. Um, down. Okay, there we go. Intel, you can download it for free. You can download it. You can download it off of Debi off of um Debi off of I believe non-free repository. On almost every distribution has this uh, repository that um has this repository that is. That, 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 that it pulls from which is which you know in this case arch doesn't really tell you it's pulling from non-free but you know that's aside the point I'm saying what I'm saying is that there's all these they offer them for free there's no cost to them all right they are in almost every distributions rep, uh, repository not necessarily by default I'm not saying that it seems like Gen 2, not by default. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. But for the people that aren't using it, but for the people that, you know, you can, inst there is a way to install it. And I, I said Gen 2 specifically, but there's like Debbie and all, a bunch of them you have to enable non free repositories before you actually access this non free software. Uh, drive firmware, software, whatever, before you can install it, which is, I think, important. I think it's good that you can sort of navigate through that. So you can install it if you need it, but you don't have it set by default. Um, that's aside the point, though. Um, no, I just... If it's free and it's available to all these Linux distributions and it is still proprietary... There is an issue because I know for a fact if it is free, you're not making any money off of it, and I know open source is secure no matter what you say. You have no reason to withhold this from the open source community you, because it's not like we're all going to jump on this and say, you know what, I don't like it because nobody's going to go in edit your code entirely, and be done with it. People are going to take it, say, oh, cool, they made it open source, and be done with it. I mean, even, like, what, freaking NVIDIA, you know, the graphics card company, everybody hated for the longest time, or just, you know, made everybody's life more difficult. Um, in this case, you know, it, it, it they open sourced their driver, and, you know, I still have no love for, um, I still have very, I have no love for NVIDIA, they just rub everything they do, rub me, they just rub me the wrong way entirely. But they open sourced their firmware, and look what they got them. People started accepting it, alright? The open source community sort of rallied around it. I'm not saying they're happy with it yet, because I mean, I know I'm not. That shouldn't have taken as long as it did to open source, and I'm still 
irritating it's taken you that long. But that's aside the point. The with the um when NVIDIA open sourced their drivers, people were still upset at them, but look what they did. They started using them. They started actually using their cards. So if you want, to, and they were like, you know, I'm happy with this. And I think NVIDIA, you know, they, as much as I hate them, I think other people started, you know, seeing them as a, you know, maybe they're trying to take some steps forward to a better, to a, to be more technological, to be a better, better technological civilian, um, or citizen, if that makes sense. Um, and people like, you know, that is good. All right, let me hit make, right? All right, let's go and make install one second. People, people looked at them and said, you know, that's right, I'm happy. I, and, you know, that, get, that got them more support. And Intel, for some unknown reason, still wants proprietary firmware for, you know, things free, that are free anyway, that are, that will still be secure if they are open source, and which, along with still being free, uh, secure if they're open source, which are actively, which would honestly be more actively developed because they can, everybody and their mom can focus their time on that if they have to. Again, overestimation, but again, you have, you open up to this many more people that can focus on it, especially, you know, people like me, I use, this is Intel. Everything in a Chromebook is Intel. I don't know why. They're built like Legos, but... It's, it's like stacked right on top of each other, but it, it's all Intel. So, you know, someone like me, I don't like using Intel. I don't like using proprietary software. I will use it if I have to. That's why I'm using IWL Wi-Fi, which is the firmware for um, Intel. But it doesn't mean I like it, and I and I guarantee that if I have the option, if, if I had the option, I would not be using a an open I would not be using a closed source driver and I would get that much, I would appreciate that company a little bit more because Intel has already done some things where they open source their drivers for graphics and sound I believe I they Intel open source graphics Graphics. It's all graphics. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, it's all graphics. They in, they open up their graphics cards, which is great. You know, it's fine. I'm happy with it. But you have so many other things you make. Why can't you open source those too? I I don't know. That's just that's my own take on it. Maybe it's entirely wrong. Maybe it's maybe it's world ending or something. I don't know. But. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry for that rant. I don't know. Really, I might be entirely off base or something. I just, I always get heated with that kind of thing. All right. Okay. Uh, does not exist. So the internal headers has been installed. Partial. Create a full version using UCC. Doesn't know. Okay. Um. Via. GCC. <clears throat> GCC, 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 okay. <clears throat> Yeah, so, yeah, I could go on and on about proprietary software and, and firmware 
and how little I dislike it, and how the myth that it is secure is, you know, just, it's awful. I hate it. <laughs> but, um, we're just, I just want to focus on this right now. Um, I could, I, you know, it, it, that's one of the benefits of live streaming. If I'm, if I'm talking to people, I can, you know, carry on a conversation with this. You know, I'm sort of just not carrying on a conversation. I'm just, you know, talking to talk. I mean, I feel like I'm, 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 I'm I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's more of a vent for me or something. I'm. <coughs> Excuse me. Good. See, what shocks me is that Glibc takes the most amount of time. Like I know GC. I was. I know I keep referencing GCC taking a long time, but. It really did, and Glibc took a long time too. But then you get something like Linux, the kernel, the kernel that we know and we love, takes. Well, no, it's more than this. When you actually, when you actually install the header, it's it's a lot more than this. But look at this. This is what we need right now. This is just the uh, approximate build time. I even for part of it. 0.1 that that's 10 seconds if that so probably let probably five it just oh, it's odd It just shows the contents, the installed headers, a bunch of different headers. But then short descriptions, you know, ASM, ASM headers, ASM generic, again, generic headers of ASM, DRM headers, Linux headers, miscellaneous headers, MTD headers, RDMA headers, SCSI headers, sound headers, video headers, Zen headers. Okay, glibc. See this. See GCC. GCC was was fourteen SPUs. This is four point four. Look how quick this is gonna go. Uh, first try. XVF glibc. So we did that. Um, first, create a symbolic link for LSB. <laughs> Again, because they're required to, they have to do this build it for LSB compliance. Also, um, there were, we. This is our first patch. Uh, we have to apply a patch. One second. 
Some of the glibc programs use non-FHS compliant. Okay. This is to make it compliant. Okay. Patching file succeeded. Succeeded. Good. Make deal v build make deer v build cd build echo root s binder equals user s bin Okay, just quickly, the meaning of the configure options. Host, again, this combines the effect of these switches, um, is that um, the combined effect of these switches, you know, we did these on the first one, I believe, and bin utils, is that glibc's build system configures itself to be cross-compiled using a cross-linker and cross-compiler and LFS tools. This enables kernel 3.2. This enables the libraries for support for 3.2 and later kernels with headers LFS user include tells glibc to compile itself against headers recently installed to LFS user include what we just did with Linux so all of these have a logical flow libc cv sly uh, slib do uh, this this line here this ensures that the library is installed the user lib instead of the default lib 64 on 64 bit machines Config, uh, this might appear these auxiliary programs are missing MSG free MT some uh, tech install file okay make okay make j4 oh I didn't compile it. That just that makes sense. I didn't configure it. Okay. And then All right. That's going to make Um yeah, uh, I just would like to make the quick quick statement that if this is taken out of context at all, which I would hope it isn't. My dis my 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 dislike for proprietary software and um, the policies of companies like Intel and NVIDIA mean nothing, uh, you know, for me. Please don't misconstrue this as me saying I dislike people who use these, the, 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 this software. I, I don't care if you use it. I'm saying I care that the company won't make it open source. I just want to make that distinction because I don't want to seem like an ass. Alright, I'd like to be the person that's welcoming to all people in the Linux community. I don't want to throw people off. I don't, or not even win. I mean, if you use Windows and Mac, good for you. I, you know, I disagree with you. Good for you. I don't hate you for doing it. I don't dislike you for doing it. You're still, I don't look either way on you. I just dislike the company policy that made that software. That's it. I just figured I might, I, I just want to get that out of the way. It's not, none of this is directed at anybody or anybody because they use it. It's all just me being upset at the company, nobody in particular. I just, I just don't want that to be mistaken. Okay, okay. As you know, I believe I said it before I was taught, I think it was on that Ubuntu video while we were waiting for it to install. I said I will, I, I would, in terms of Chromebooks, you know, they're locked down, they're proprietary. But I said I would welcome anybody who uses a Chromebook. I would embrace them as a friend. I will. I, I stand by that statement. Anybody uses a Chromebook, anybody uses a Windows laptop, anything. I will stand by them as, I will stand with them as a friend. But that does not mean I will stand by the people who make the software, that make the hardware. I just, I just, I, I like to make, I do not base, I don't judge people based on what they use or anything. I just want to make sure that's out there and not misconstrued or anything. I 
mind, especially because who would I be to talk? I, I just said I use proprietary firmware. I mean, it doesn't, you know, I'd have to be the biggest hypocrite on this side of Hudson. Well, not the biggest, because I can think of many more, but I, I would have to be a pretty hip, big hypocrite to just, uh, you know, just assume things like that. Well, when I started working, the sun was out, uh, now the sun's down, and it's currently almost 10 o'clock. It is 21.56. Um, so, we're just waiting for that 22. That doesn't mean anything. I'm probably not going to cut it off until I feel dead to my feet or something. But, because with this, it's, um, it, it's not taking up any energy here. I mean, I could, if I wanted to, I could install Linux from scratch or, and or get most of it done in one night. Again, doesn't mean it's healthy or anything. It probably isn't. But, you know, I could do it. <laughs> okay, at this point, Glibsy has been completely compiled. Make it install. Okay, the desk steer makes it, uh, makes, uh, make variable, is used by almost all packages to define the location where the package should be installed. If not set, it defaults to the root directory. Here we specify the package to be the, the package be installed in LFS, which will become the root after section 7.4 entering the true environment. Okay. Okay, this has been completely installed. And then we just have to uh, run in a patch. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, not a patch. We just need to uh, set out a, uh, there's a mistake. Uh, there's a hard-coded hard -coded path to the execu executable loader that um, is, uh, it's, um, needs to be fixed. So just gonna run that real quick. Run the following. Okay, so I'm just gonna run it. If everything is working correctly, this should. Okay, so the next step, we just need to run this. Um, and um, pr pr to perform a sanity check. Every if everything, if there are no errors, it should come out with this. Uh, lib64 slash uh, lib64 slash ld slash Linux. Uh, LB dash Linux dash x eighty six dash sixty four dot SO dot two Lib sixty four LD Linux x x eighty six sixty four dot SO dot two And then if you are running on a thirty two bit machine, this is what you'd see you'd see LB dash Linux dot SO dot two Lib da uh, li slash lib slash ld dash linux uh, dot so dot two once all is well we are good fixing it okay
Now that our cross tool chain is complete, finalize the installation um, file of the limits.h header. For doing so, run in the utility provided by the GCC devs. Okay. Cool. Clear. All right, that's all compiled. Next up is libstdc. So we're just gonna make here the build. Oh, ha! One second. Um, ls. Lib. Um, wow. Shoot. Cd. Rmrf. What is that? Glibc. Glibc. 2.36 glibc2.36 yep okay lib st lib oh this is only point four SBUs um what is it I I do need to find it though um G oh, oh my god, it's part of the GCC sources. Wow, okay. I bet I can do this. What are these? Host equals that specifies the cross compiler. It specifies that the cross compiler we have just built should be used instead of one in user bin. Disable lib libst cxx. I don't know pch. This switch prevents the installation of pre-compiled include files which are not needed at this stage. Okay. With gxx include der, uh, der equals tools lfs target include c++ 12.2.0 this specifies the installation directory for include files because libs libs tdc++ is a standard c++ library for lfs this direction should match the location where the c++ compiler uh, which is a lfs target g++ would search for the standard c++ include files in a normal build, this information is automatically passed to the libstdc++ lib configure options from the top-level directory. In our case, this information must be explicitly given. The C++ compiler will, will uh, prepend the sysroot path LFS, which is a specified building gcc pass one to the include file search path, so we'll actually search um, LFS tools LFS target include C++ 12.2.0. The combination of the destier variable and the make install command and, um, in the make install command below, below, and this switch ensures to install the headers there. So, Okay, that's this should not take any time at all. All right.
This said only about 0. 0.4, so it's going to take 20 seconds max, I think. Oop, top of the hour. It just hit 11 o'clock in the eastern seaboard, on the eastern seaboard. That is 11 o'clock Friday night. I feel like we'll be moving into the morning soon. We'll obviously be moving into the morning soon here. Um, I feel like we'll be recording into the morning. Shouldn't be getting too tired. Not as bad as I was that one day. That was... Yikes. Okay, uh, just in case you... Because you, in case you missed it, I installed the library and then I'm removing the libtool archive files. And as they say, because they are harmless for the cross... I'm sorry, not harmless. Because they were harmful for cross compilation. Okay, that's removed. Next. Cross compiling. Oop. Okay, we're starting to move into the temporary tools. This means it soon will be able to finally troot into our installation, which is, you know, pretty important. Uh, once we troot in, we're actually configuring the installation. This is. I'm moving much quicker than I did before. This is amazing. Uh, this chapter shows how to cross compile basic utilities using the just built uh, cross tool chain. Those utilities are installed into their final location, but cannot be used yet. Basic tasks still rely on the host's tools. Nevertheless, this uh, installed libraries are used when linking. Okay, um, I'm not building as root, and the, uh, let's just double check. I almost put in tm right, but let's just double check. Echo lfs, and then tm clear. Okay. Um, after enter, it will be usable using. Okay, let's open up M4. Now, these are all very, very quick, except for the very end, so. Um, CD. Okay, uh, again, just configuration. This is the same thing as we just did. It just, you know, host, LFS target, build. That just shows, you know, config, that guess, all that. Um, ah. Interesting. This. Oh. <laughs> I didn't do the dot. Alright. Well, that's stupid. There we go. I thought there was something wrong, but I uh, forgot the period. You see the period dot slash configure? It's an executable, and I just messed it up. Just installed it. That again, that took almost nothing. All right, next up is end curses. Uh, I guess I can give a per reason all the what what exactly these do. So previous M four is a um, it contains a macro processor. Um, but uh, the end curses package uh, it uh, contains libraries for terminal independent handling of character screens. For those that don't know what a um, end curses is, um, I can show you one real quick. Um, I don't like using Network Manager. I personally prefer IWD and IWCTL. But in this case, um, uh, uh, there were some things with school Wi-Fi 
that you need to import certificates and such that you can do on IWD. It's just easier to do on Network Manager. That's why I'm using it. But I'm just going to run this. Activate a connection. Uh, well, no, so this is Encos. You've seen it before if you've ever. Let's hit activate a connection. You know, you can. You know, this is Encos. All right. Back. Quit. And then. XVF N curses six dot three dot par dot gz cd and cur uh just for the end extension that gz or xz I'm just guessing at this point because it's one of the two I don't need to if I know it, if it turns out one is not the right extension I just need to do gz it's uh wait ensure ensure that gawk is found first during installation. Oh, this is just saying it's found. Okay, that's not an actual, that won't put out an output, I guess. Then run the, to build the tick. Um, one shouldn't take very long oh this is okay all right so this should be done soon so yeah uh, I guess I'll just let you know what exactly everything does you know once we uh, as we're um, working Uh, again, meaning of new configurations options. Um, with me, this prevents Encos is installing compressed manual pages, which may happen if the host itself has compressed man pages. This makes uh, Encos's build and install shared C library. Wait, what? This makes Encos's build and install. Sh oh, okay. This prevents Encos's building and installing. Building and installing debugs. Okay, so this prevents it from in building and installing. Uh, static C. This makes it install shared C. This stops it from installing static. This stops it from installing debugs libraries. And this also, and then with CXX, this makes this makes Encos's build and install shared C++ bindings, but prevents it from uh, installing static C++ bindings. This ensures Encos's does not build support for add a compiler, which may be present on the host. But will not be available once we. Okay, so we just don't want it to build. Su we don't want it to build support. That's why we have the without adder. Uh, disable stripping. This switch prevents the build system from stripping the programs using strip. Um, using host. Uh, okay, using host tools on cross compiled program can cause failure. Okay. This switch causes wall uh, wide character libraries, which is um, libn curses sw dot so dot six dot three as an example. To be build, uh, built instead of the normal ones, which is um, libcoses.so.6.3. These wide character libraries are usable in both multi byte and traditional 8 bit locales. All normal libraries work um, properly only in 8 bit locales. Uh, wide character and normal libraries are source compatible, but not binary compatible. Again, this shouldn't take very long either. And then just make J4. Alright. Just so we have an idea, it looks like our biggest challenge will be in 8. 8 has the most. That's where all we are doing. You know, I can, you know, talk to you guys without even explaining what I'm doing because everybody knows what this is. We're just installing all of these applications, compiling and compiling and compiling. It's not awful, it's just, you know, I don't necessarily want to do it. Um, make J4. 
I need to go back to Emicosis. So make sure. Oh. Okay. Uh, tick path password build progs tick we just we need to pass the path of the just built tick um, able to run on the building machine so the terminal database can be created without errors echo input the libcoses.so library is needed by a few packages we bi we will build soon we create this smaller link script as this is what is done in chapter 8 Alright. Oh, CD sources. Arm, RF, and curses. 6.3. Bash 5.1.6. 16. Sorry. Sorry. Gz right. cd bash 5.1.16 okay just again um, we're just gonna configure it the meaning um, without bash malloc this turns off the use of bash's memory allocation function which is uh, called malloc um, which is known to cause segmentation faults by turning this option off Bash will use malloc functions from glibc, which are more stable. Um, just a brief explanation. The bash, well, what am I saying? Um, so it's the born again shell. If you've ever used Linux, I guarantee you've used bash, whether you know it or not. Um, it's the shell. That's pretty standard. Now, some are being overtaken, like there's dash. I believe that's a Debian. And then there's uh, ZSH. Um, and fish, uh, fish hasn't been used as a mainline kernel, uh, not main, a mainline shell yet. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, I personally, I like fish, but I haven't really needed to use it for anything. So, like, if that makes any sense, I, I mean, it, it, fish is just. I, I like as much as I like fish and the completion that completion thing is wonderful but it um I just haven't had a use for it quite yet I mean I have I haven't had enough encouragement to really go and pursue it bash works fine for me so use look shell um one second I completely forgot. Use the following PSP. Oh, yeah, bash. Yep. <laughs> All right. I can't believe I. Yep. I don't generally check what I'm, what shell I'm using. I know I was using bash. I just, I like to prove it to people. I, I guess I don't know. It's not even that much of like. It's not even a pride thing. I just. Okay, I just need to make it real quick. And then again, we're just going to do make desk or LFS install. good and then we just need to make a sim link for the programs that use the SA, that use sh for a shell all right cd bash 5.1.16 tar xvf 
for you too is that one that tar that PC. Okay. Right, there's one new one new configure option. This just um, enable this uh, enables host name binary to be built and installed. It's disabled by default, um, but is required by the uh, as it says required by the Perl test suite. I don't like where that is. I'm gonna I'm not gonna change it. You know, the only thing that's really, really ran my computer, like actually giving it some wear and tear, is the GCC and such. So I don't compile very much on this. You know, there's already, they, I just, you know, I guess install packages. That's not really being compiled, though, because it's not installing it from a source. It's installing it from a binary that's in the um, Arch repos. Um, I don't do things that really put any wear and tear on my CPU. That's why I've had this computer for you know, however long. Wait, I just need to make sure. Oh, that was a config. Oh, yeah. I think it, I was like, it must have been, I remember when I first realized why all the GNU utils were named, why they were named, like, Trout and such. I, it must have been like a, a six months ago or something. I was looking at, um, I was looking at Linux things and I was, I don't know what made me do it, but I looked at GNU, um, you know, all the GNU, uh, tools and such that come with, um, you know, core utils and such, I realized things like truth means means change root, cd is change directory, I don't think that's a GNU thing, but all of the terminal things that come with it, that, you know, ship with, that all the terminal, in applicate, all the terminal um, uh, executables that come with any Linux system are all named logically and I didn't realize that but I, I it was like a sla it was like being hit by bricks when I finally did which doesn't make much sense but it I mean I never it never even occurred to me and it just came out of nowhere flying at the speed of light that's all this move the program to the Final expected location, although this is not necessary in the temporary environment, must do so because some programs hard code executable locations. Okay. Okay. RMRF core utils 9.1. XDF diff utils three dot eight. Oh, dot tar dot gc. Ah, why is it capitalized? CD diff utils three dot eight. Okay, uh, there's nothing much to explain here. It's everything we've used already, all these configure options. A lot of these are just going to be me just talking straight through it. Because, I mean, look at it, though. It's not like it needs much of an explanation. We know what we're doing.
This is okay. Uh, the uh, file command on the build host needs to be the same version as the one we are building in order to create the signature file. Run the following commands to build it. Make view. Okay. Okay, this needs to be the same version. Oh, disable this configuration script attempts to use some packages from the host distribution. If the corresponding file exists, this may cause complication, but the correspond um, this may cause complication failure, but the corresponding file. Okay, this option prevents using these unique capabilities from host. Okay. All right, then we're just preparing it. through this anymore. Uh, just a quick note about what I just did. I deleted the archive file because evidently it's harmful for cross compilation. Special here. Just configuring. Yeah, a lot of this, you know, very simple. You know, you learn. Yeah, you know, I'm learning. Obviously, I know what this means, but I, you know, it just most of it's just learning as you type. I mean, this is what I mean. It's not incredibly difficult. That's uh, that's why I said earlier. It's not. It's not simple but it's not difficult either like you don't need to that's why i said you don't need to be a genius I, again please i wasn't saying i'm a genius or anything i'm not i'm you know comparably you know i'm, I'm a nitwit uh, but First, ensure some unneeded files are not okay. I can never. I'm gonna tell you a secret. Well, it's not really a secret anymore. Um, I don't understand said. I don't understand anything about it. I mean, there's I like. I guess I haven't taken the time to learn what exactly it's doing, but all the weird and not annotations. It's the the weird syntax for it. Like, what is with all these backslashes and apostrophes? And they'll put parentheses in weird places, I think. I don't know. It, if you're familiar with the concept of a fork bomb, it almost looks like that. If it didn't say said before, that's what I think. That's what I would think it would be. Uh, for those that are unfamiliar, a fork bomb is a malicious. You know, it's a malicious command you can it's well it's not malicious within itself you know it, it, it can't help it but it's a command you run in your terminal that will actually it's a fork bomb because it'll keep running it's so many so many processes eventually it just crashes your computer it just, you know no computer left i mean it, it doesn't do it you know it's not like pseudo rmrf uh slash you know star 
no preserved roots or anything. It's, it's um, but it, it just it crashes your computer, and that's why you don't want to run it. And when that's when people, you know, people will give bad advice. They're like, oh, run this, and some new 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 person that doesn't really know any better will say, okay, yeah, you know, if it helps, it helps, and end up, you know, crashing their entire system. So. That's just all. That's what I was saying. That said, just looks, looks, looks like one. It's not obviously, but oh, I didn't uh, talk about the last two. Um, just for those who don't know, find utils. Uh, I guess I didn't talk about file either. The file package contains a utility for determining the given file, the type, oh, given uh, the type of a given file. The find utils package contains programs to find files. And then the gawk is, uh, contains uh, programs for manipulating text files. Okay, so we're just gonna compile this real quick. Uh, the grep package. Xvf grep seven three dot seven dot tar. The uh, grep package uh, contains programs for um, searching through the contents of files. Um, I use grep on some of the bash scripts. Uh, some of the scripting when I script. When I do some scripting, that's what I use. I use grep to. Uh, I anytime I don't want to have big amounts of output, anytime I need to find something specifically within the output of a command or something, I'll have it print into a file, and then I'll have um, grep go into that file and search for the specific line, and do something if they find this line, or do something if it doesn't, you know. I was working on an Arch install script, but I couldn't figure out how to script IWCTL, which is annoying. I mean, I I think at one point I found a way to do it. I just, I never did it. I haven't focused on it in a while. I might hop back onto it again or something. I don't know. You know, there's plenty of install scripts out there. It's not like this is a new thing, a new phenomenon or anything. I was making it just because, you know, I thought it'd be nice. And then I would also go above and beyond. What I was planning on doing is going above and beyond and doing, like, you know, if you want to ju just stop after your basic arch installation is finished, that's fine. But then if you want to really go above and beyond and be like, you know, I want this minimal arch thing. I want this um, minimal arch. I want this. Oh, I want this, you know, oh, not minimal. I want this. I want a GUI. Then you can customize which GUI you want. So it would be... You pick between a desktop environment or a window environment, or window manager. You, if you hit desktop environment, you could do KDE or GNOME or XFCE for, and then, you know, and probably maybe a couple others, whatever is on the Arch wiki. Um, and then for the uh, window manager, you know, and I always give a little blurb about it, but for the window manager, I'd probably pay, I'd give them options, you know, BSPWM and all that. And then I'd of course give them an option for the compositor. Actually, a compositor would probably be come before we talk about graphical user interface. No, not compositor. Window system, then compositor. So Pycom or like, or um, Hyperlin or Wayland. You know. <sighs> Just gonna configure these. Oh, I think that's 
stone. Shouldn't be too much more if I make right. Yeah, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, the make. Oh, I didn't do the last. Well, I'll get this started. Dot P V. Uh, oh, there is one new configure option. It is without guile. Um, although we are cross compiling, configure tries to use guile from the build host if it finds it. This makes uh, the compilation fail, so this switch prevents. So this switch prevents using it. Um, gzip. Uh, the gzip package contains programs for compressing and decompressing files. That's what you get when you do a tar.gz file or something. Uh, the make file uh, contains a program for controlling the generation of executables and other non um, non source files of a package from source files which is you know we're running make that means that it's making these executables and when we run make install it's installing them onto the system that's you know at this point we we used make <laughs> plenty of times um, tar xdf huh, I messed something up <laughs> I know I did I will move that right here. Patch two dot seven dot six dot tar. Prefix user dash host. Uh, okay, build build box config dot. Okay. All right, I was just making sure I still I had I still have the right command. It wasn't like the last config or anything. Patch package contains a program for modifying or creating files by applying a patch file, typically created by the uh, diff program. Simple, just run through this. easy Ooh, we're pack we're un we're uh, unpacking the uh, the packager itself the unpacker itself tar dot um let's just configure this
see. Um, okay. Um, said package contains a stream editor. Um, the tar package provides the ability to create tar to create tar archives, as well as perform other uh, other various other kinds of archive manipulation. It can be used to earn, um, on previous created archives to extract files, to store additional files, or to update um, or to update or list files which are already stored. XZ, the XZ package contains programs for compressing XZ. Um, for compressing and decompressing files, it provides uh, capabilities for the LZMA and the newer. XZ compression formats. Compressing text files with XZ yields a better compression percentage than with the traditional gzip or bzip2 commands. Tool archive. This is harmful for cross contamination. Cross compilation. Alright, we have one more, then we get to the second pass of GCC. Tool ships without dated lib tool copy in the tarball. It lacks sysroot supports. So the produced binaries will be mistakenly linked with libraries from the host distro. Work around this issue with that. Create a separate build directory again. As always, compile. Um, configure uh, enable shared builds. Uh, libfd is a shared library. This also enables 64-bit support on hosts with narrower, narrower word sizes. May not be needed on 64-bit systems, but does no harm. Well, you know. I'd rather it does no harm and stays on there than it's not on there and I need it. This is just amazing. Alright, this shouldn't take very long. I know bin utils didn't take very long. I think I'm gonna cut it at GCC and then just uh, pick back up once it's done. Not a separate video, but just, just because I don't wanna. Um, yeah, GCC is just. <laughs> it's gonna take a very long time. It's even longer, I think, the second time around. And glibc, now that I think about it, glibc does take a very, very long time when you compile it the second time on the actual system. Uh, lib, uh, glibc is amazing. It's, it does so much. It's, I, didn't re I did not realize how much it did, honestly, until I, like, compiled it. It's amazing. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> A 
remove lib tool f tool archives because they were harmful for cross uh, compilation. That's just a regular event now. It's not normally there. Um, uh, just, I guess, an explanation. Bin utils contains a linker, an assembler, and other tools for handling object files. Again, just doing the same thing we did before. Allow override the building rule of lib gc lib stc uh, stdc plus plus headers to allow building these libraries with POSIX thread support. And then build directory again. Four new configurations options um, with build sysroot equals LFS. Uh, normally, the ho using host ensures a cross compiler is used for building GCC, um, and that compiler knows it is to look for headers and libraries in LFS. But the build system of GCC uses other tools which are not aware of this location. The switch is needed to have them find the needed files in LFS and not on the host. Target LFS target. As we cross as we are cross compiling GCC, it's impossible to build target libraries, libgcc and libsdc plus plus with the um, libs libsd stdc plus plus with the compiled GCC binaries because these binaries won't run on the host distro. GCC building system will attempt to use C and C plus plus compilers on the host distro as a workaround by default. It's not supported to build GCC target libraries with a different version of GCC, so using host compilers may cause building failure. Um, LD flags for target allow libs lib uh, stdc plus plus to use shared l lib um, to use shared lib GCC uh, being built this pass instead of the static version built in GCC pass one. This is needed for supporting C++ exception handling. And then also the enable uh, init finny array. This option is automatically enabled when building a native compiler with a native compiler on x86. But here we build with a cross compiler, so we may need to explicitly set this option. We're just going to cut it off. I'm going to start running this. We're just going to cut it to the when it's done. Okay. At this point, um, GCC has been completely compiled. So we're just going to uh, install it. Alright, and then we're also uh, going to um, create a utility symlink. Many programs and scripts run C scenes at GCC, which are used to keep programs generic and therefore useful in all kinds of Unix systems. Where GNU C compilers are not always installed. These is an. Um,
Okay. All right. At this point, <clears throat> we are going to be able to enter the troop and build additional temporary tools. Uh, and then at this point, once we're done with chapter seven, we have chapter eight, which is the most compiling known to man. Um, also, uh, it is currently 12.07 on Saturday morning in the on the eastern seaboard. So we've been at it for four hours. Yeah, three. Three, four, six, seven, eight. So it's been about it. Five hours. All right. Well, this will be one very long video. <laughs> so, make five, five hours doesn't sound right. We'll see. Four and a half because I had a thirty-minute lunch break, um, dinner break. Let's see, see. Okay. Um. Introduction. This chapter shows how to build the last missing bits of the temporary system. The tools needed to buy um, the tools needed by the build machinery of various packages. For proper operation of the isolated environment, some communication with the running kernel must be established. This is done through the so-called virtual files, uh, virtual kernel file systems, which must be mounted when when entering the troop environment. If you want to check that they are mounted, use find a mount. Until section, okay. Uh, until section seven point four, uh, the commands must be done as root. Without, okay, okay. So we need to exit. Okay, the commands must be run as root without the LFS variant and changing. Oh, logged in as user root no longer. Also, double check that LFS is set. Okay, okay let's just double check. Ec um, hmm. Echo LFS. Yep, set. Dangerous uh, kept as they are based on with a based on with a user ID without corresponding. This is a dangerous piece of user because a user of the account created later could get the same on its own on the files. Plus explosion. Okay, well I don't think we need to worry about that, but good to know. Um <coughs> sorry. I just had to check something. Um, this is dangerous because user accounts created later could get the same user ID and would own all files under LFS, thus exposing these files to possible malicious manipulation. To address the issue, change the ownership of the LFS uh, slash uh, star uh, asterisk directories to user um, root by running the following command. That's what I did. So we're all happy and good. Okay, make dear. We just need to. Create something under which uh, various file systems exported by the kernel are used to communicate to and from the kernel itself. These file systems are virtual in that no disk is disk space is used for them. The content of the file systems resides in the memory. <clears throat> Begin by creating directories onto which the file systems will be mounted. So make dear people. 
mounting and populating dev. Uh, doing the normal boot, the kernel automatically mounts the dev TPMF, uh, TMPFS uh, file system on the dev directory and allow the devices to be created dynamically on that virtual file system as they are de detected or accessed. The device creation is generally done during the boot process by the kernel and UDEV. Since the new system does not yet have UDEV and has not been booted, it is necessary to mount and populate dev manually. This is accomplished by bind mounting the host system's dev directory. A bind mount is a special type of mount that allows you to create a mirror of, the, of a directory or mount point uh, to some other location. Use the following command to achieve this. need to make sure nothing was messed up. Um, mounting the virtual kernel file systems. Now mount the remaining virtual kernel file systems. Okay, I'm just going to copy and paste this. I've done it manually a couple times. I just I just don't feel like in some of the in the host systems dev schm. Okay. Entering the truth environment. Okay, this is going to be essential. I'm in. I'm in. Yes. 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 Okay. If you don't know the reason for my celebration, anytime I build LFS, I always get worked up because uh, the first because my first build was not my first build. It was my first full build. I made one before that I was not great at it. I the truth would never log in but now I have the truth and I'm so freaking happy because with because I it wouldn't shoot into the system and it, that stops progress you can't do anything more you have to redo the entire thing I'm so freaking happy I don't need to do that I option gives given to the end command will clear all variables out of the true environment. After that, only the home term PS1 and path variables are set again. The term equals term construct will set uh, the term variable inside the truth to the same value outside of the truth. This variable is needed for programs like Vim and Less to operate properly. If other variables are desired, such as C flags or CXX flags, this is a good place to set them again. From this point on, there is no need to use the LFS variable anymore because all the work will be restricted to the LFS file system. Oh, yes. Um, I forgot. There's nothing installed. LSBLK is not existent. Um, that's why that didn't work. I forgot it didn't work. That's just because the bash shell is told that Z that LFS is now the root directory. We know that uh, tools uh, slash bin is not the path. This means that the cross tool chain will no longer be used in the environment. Uh, the, the bash prompt will say, "I have no name." This is normal because the Etsy password file has not been created yet. It is important that all the commands throughout the remainder of this chapter and the following chapters are run from within the truth environment. If you leave this environment for any reason, uh, rebooting, for example, ensure that the kernel. The virtual kernel file systems are mounted as explained in those areas and enter the truth again before continuing with the installation. It's time to create the full structure in the LFS file system. Create some root level directories that are not limited that are not in the limited set required in the previous chapters by issuing the following command. Create the required set of subdirectories below the root level by issuing. Okay. Directories are by default created with permission mode 755, but this is not desirable for all directories. 
commands above, two changes are made, one to the home directory of the user root and the other to the directories um root where's root? Oh yeah. And the other to the directories for temporary files. The first mode change ensures that it not, not just anybody can enter the root directory not that not just anybody can enter the root directory. Same as the normal user would do with his or her home directory. The second mode change makes sure that any user can write to the temp and var temp directories but cannot remove other users' files from them. The latter is prohibited by the so called sticky bit, the highest bit one in the one seven seven one seven 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 bit mask. The directory tree is based on the FHS. Um, FHS also specifies the optional existence of some directories such as user local games and user share games. We rec we uh, create only the directories that are needed. However, feel free to however feel free to create these directories. Historically, Linux maintains a list of the mounted file systems in the Etsy M tab. Modern kernels maintain this list internally and expose it to the user via the proc file system. To satisfy utilities that expect the presence of Etsy and MTAB, MTAB create the following symlink. Create a ba basic Etsy hosts file to be referenced in some test suites. Okay. to use root uh, to be able to log in and for the user name root to be recognized there must be relevant entries in Etsy password create these by running the following command create the Etsy group file Create groups are not part of any standard. They are groups decided on in part by the requirements of the UDEV config in Chapter 9 and in part by the common convention employed by a number of, um, of existing Linux distros. In addition, some test suites rely on specific users or groups. The LSB um, only recommends that, besides the group root with the group ID of 0, a group bin with a GID of 1 be present. The GID of 5 is widely used for TTY group, and the number 5 is also used in Etsy FSTAB for the dev PTS file system. All other group names and GIDs can be chosen freely by the SIPS admin since well written programs do not depend on GID numbers but rather use the group's name. The ID65534 uh, is used by the kernel for NFS and separate user namespaces. For unmapped users and groups, um, those exist on the NFS server or the parent user namespace, but do not exist on the local machine or in the separate namespace. We assign nobody and no group for it to avoid an unnamed ID, but other distros may treat this ID differently, so any portable program should not depend on this assignment. Some tests in Chapter 8 and he do will need a regular user. We can add this user here and delete this account at the end of that chapter. Uh, oh, we're making it how you, how you used to do it. He used to not have things like Shadow that let you uh, add group, add users and such. You had to um, do it like this. I would not want to do ever. Is 101 the GUID? I, or UID? I don't know what. Yeah, I guess it is. Interesting. Okay. Ah. 
Ah, this is putting it... Okay. Oh, that's not hard to understand. I just would never do it myself. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, to remove, I have no name prompt, start a new shell. Username and group name resolution will now work. Oh, good. That was... I have no name was not nice. Um, the login, a Getty, and init programs and others use a number of log files to record information, such as who was logged into the system and when. However, these programs will not write to log files if they do not already exist. Initialize the log files and give them proper permissions. Okay. The var log wm wtmp file records all logins and logouts. The var log last log file records when each user last logged in. The var log fail log requires uh, records failed login attempts. The var log btmp file records the bad login attempts. Okay. Uh, the run utmp file records the users that are currently logged in. This file is created dynamically in the boot scripts. Okay. Okay, we have a couple things more now. So cd sources ls. Well, okay. Let me just double check. Make sure gcc is. Yes, it is. Okay. Tar xv f get text. O to O O dot that's X V. CD get text. All right, we're just gonna configure. Disabled. Uh, we do not need to install any of the shared gitx uh, gitx libraries at this time. Therefore, there is no need to build them. And just while this is doing this, the um, gitx package contains utilities for interna interna internationalization and localization. These allow programs to be compiled with NLS, which is native language support, enabling them to output messages in the user's native language. It's going to take about 1.6 uh, standard build units. And uh, 282 megabytes space. It's almost done. Yep. All right, this is going to take some time. Uh, yeah, so, you know, it's nice to be finally doing this. Uh, again, you know, I'm working on getting a more standard schedule, so I figure once I got a couple weeks into school, I could, you know, We've been in school uh, two weeks, right? Yeah. So you know, I just wanted to get the um, want to get a couple videos in, you know. But I also didn't want to work around my uh, have to work too far around my school schedule. And I found that with last year, last week, I was trying desperately to record my um my uh, the newscast, and that just Ugh, it didn't go well. I wasn't used to the new schedule yet, and I had, there were just, a lot of things just prevented me from doing that. So I think if I'm going to record anything, it's going to be something easy or something simple like this during the week, and then maybe Saturday I'll do the newscast, just change the date, you know. Make it less so it's, through the middle of the week, happen to work. 
that day, that one time I posted on Wednesday, but it doesn't work, like, you know, anymore, so I just, I'd just rather that I don't, I don't know. Hey, thank God for these under the computer coolers. Um, so this is a laptop and compiling is pretty heavy on laptops. And this is the coolest my computer's ever been. I have this little fan and I have this uh, fan, um, computer cooler fan underneath it. It's do working wonders. Stop. Stupid thing. It's working wonders. Not that. <laughs> okay, I need to install these programs. So just. Bison 3.28.2 and compile. And then there's just one thing here uh, doc do equals user share doc bison 3.8.2. This tells the build system to install the bison documentation into a version dictionary. Directory, sorry, not dictionary. Uh, the bison the bison package bison bison package contains a uh, parser generator. And no more desk dear. This is just make install now. Because we're true to it, it doesn't matter. Configure pro. Configuring. There was only one new configure thing. That's des. This is the combination of three options. D uses default for all items. E ensures completion of all tasks. S silences non-essential output. It's kind of curious. Dragonfly. Oh, these are all the things it supports. Links over us. Midnight BSD. Wow, there's a lot of BSD. I mean, I knew there were a lot of BSD. I mean, I, D BSD operating systems. I just didn't know this. There were this many. I've um, I've been actually been thinking about trying out BSD. Uh, just uh, running through it. Maybe make a video or something. Just saying, you know, this. Hey, look at this. If I had to pick one, I'm told Ghost BSD is really fun or really nice. So we'll see what happens. Uh, just so you know, the Perl package contains the practical ex extraction and report language. Perl is in almost every Linux system I can think of at the moment. I mean, 
I think it is. It's not as standard as it was. I think it's. It used to be a bigger language, but right now it's it's fading away. I think I believe. If you love, then you've definitely learned Perl and programmed in it. I have not. I'm pretty certain you've also used Perl more than once. Perhaps the language was created in 1987. Yeah, see, Perl is a blue line. It's consistently going down. Perl is high-level interpreted language. It's uh, um, open source and free to contribute to. Um... It served as a foundation for a lot of basic networking track uh, tasks, gateway interfaces, MIME decoding, and emails. It was supposed to be flexible and fun. Uh, comparing Perl. I'm just trying to find conclusion. Perl has always been very remarkable about its documentation and tutorials. Hopefully, I mean, that's convincing and reasonably objective based on current trends. That didn't answer my question at all. Thanks a lot, Stack Overflow. It's a shame, though. Stack Overflow is like... They have some... They, the Q&A and such, they've helped me through so many tight, tight spots. It's not even tight spots. Just help me figure stuff out. It's... it's it's it, it it's done its part in my Linux journey. It's like linuxquestions.com, I think it is. That did a lot too. Python three dot okay. I remember I had issues with this when I inst when I did do the full installation. I didn't realize Python was a capital letter. That's so weird. I, I understand it's capital, but still. Nothing else is capital when you just decide to you know. Okay, we seem to come uh, prepare uh, Python for compilation. The meaning uh, compilation uh, for being compiled. The meaning of the configuration op uh, options. Enable shared um, prevents installation of static libraries and without um, ensure pip. This which disables the Python package manager, which is not needed in this stage. <coughs> well, I would run enable optimizations, but I don't want to mess with this. 
much as I wanna. I don't want to. Um, yeah, especially if you're doing it for the first time, you just don't want to mess with anything. Like, I might rebuild this maybe in a month or so, a couple months. When the next, when 11.3 comes out, I might build it and use run it instead of, um, instead of sysbin it. Because they have a run it for LFS implementation. And for those that have seen my channel, uh, so my Void Linux video, you'll know I really enjoy run it more than systemd or sysv or openrc. I, there's, I really do love run it. There's only one thing that uses it. But they did make an implementation for it, and I'm, I've been dying to use it because, right, it's such a, it's, it's something I like, and I, you know, in terms, we were talking about personal taste earlier, yeah, you know, my personal taste is to use run it, and I'm just looking forward to being able to do that at some point. And no, I'm probably gonna. I might rebuild. I might do a new video every couple years. But um, but every time, but um, every couple, not every couple years. Every I might do a new LFS build. Every couple releases, but I'm not gonna do one every time a new one is dropped. Um, they drop them. I think every month. I don't want to go through that. I, I really don't. Um. So, we'll see what, what happens, but. And please don't misunderstand me, I enjoyed, I really enjoy doing, you know, doing Linux from scratch, but there's only so much you can do. And anybody who's done it before knows exactly what I mean. It is, it gets to a point where you're just, you know, you're bored. That's it. I mean, you don't hate it or anything. You just, you just lose interest. And then if everybody's wondering, I'm sure everybody knows what Python is, but Python 3 package contains a Python development environment. It's useful, useful for object-oriented programming, writing scripts, prototyping large programs, or developing entire applications. And again, then again, it also then again it also um, includes the Python programming language. Text info. Tonics via. This won't take hardly any time. Text info contains programs for reading, writing, and converting info pages. HS recommends that recommends using var lib hw clock directory instead of the usual Etsy directory as a location for adjust time file. 
prepare. Okay, there are five new um, configure options. Uh, add time path or adjust time path equals varlib h uh, varlib hardware clock adjust time. This sets the location of the file recording information about the hardware clock in accordance to the FHS. This is not strictly needed for the temporary tool, but prevents creating a file at another location, which would not be overwritten or removed when building the final util Linux patch. Uh, libdo user lib. This switch ensures that .so targeted targeting the shared library file in the same directory directly. This ensure oh, ensures the symlinks target the same the shared they target the shared library file in the same directly same directory di directly uh, disable anything these switches prevent warnings about building components that require packages not in LFS or not installed yet uh, without Python this switch disables using Python it avoids trying to build unneeded bindings Run state dir run state directory equals run. This switch sets the location of the socket used by UUID and lib UUID correctly. Just for a frame of reference. Uh, util Linux package contains miscellaneous utility programs. I'm using make j4 which I, I mean I said it earlier um, I just want to move as quick as I possibly can and honestly this is the quickest I've ever had an installation of LFS move so need to keep this in mind First, remove the currently installed documentation to prevent them from ending in the final system to save about 35 megabytes. Second, the libtool.la files are only useful when linking with static libraries. These are unneeded and potentially harmful when using dynamic shared libraries, especially when non-auto tools, especially when using non-auto tools build systems. While still in the truth, remove those files now. The current system size is about now th is about three gigabytes. However, the tools directory is no longer needed. It uses about one gigabytes of s disk space. Delete it now. That deleted our first installation of like GCC. All those like I think it was like four or five tools then. At this point, the essential programs and libraries have been created, and your current LFS system is in a good state. Your system that can now be backed up for later reuse. In case of fatal failures in the subsequent chapters, it often turns out that it often turns out that removing everything and starting over is the best option to recover. Unfortunately, all the temporary files will be removed too. To avoid spending extra time to redo something which has already been built successfully, creating a backup of the current LFS system might prove useful. All the remaining steps in this section are optional. Nevertheless, as soon as you begin installing packages in 8, the temporary files will be overwritten. So it may be a good idea to do a backup of the current system as described below. Okay, I'm going to make a backup. Just in case. source tarballs would be included in them. 
on the file system, note that the instructions below specify the home directory of the host system's root user, which is typically found on the root file system. Because the, it's, it takes relatively over 10 minutes on it, even. So it's going to take about 10 minutes. So what we're looking at next is we're restoring in case we need to restore it. We just have to, at this point, all we have to do, look how much we've done. We just have to install the basic system software. <coughs> it looks like this is my this is probably where I'm going to leave it off tonight. So that said, thank you so much for joining me. I'll look uh, look for this video to be posted probably tomorrow or early in the morning today, depending on how quickly I edit it. Um, probably tomorrow. Um, well, yeah, probably you know later Saturday. Um, I look for it then. So, um, just, uh, yep. And then also, yep, that's all I really have to say, I think, yeah. Then I'll look for this next one to probably come out tomorrow, too. I'm just looking to crank them both out, just get it done, but I just need to, I just, it's get, it's, we're at a good stopping point. Um, so, that said, it is currently 12.49, or uh, it's currently 12.49, at the um, on the eastern seaboard, and this is Declan Flutterjohn, and I am signing out. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you on the uh, next video. Uh, keep it real.